Not happening. With the slurp reach? Yeah. Oh, I broke. It's kind of down in the grate there, right? If it's too difficult, we can move on. It's not really an uh, essential sample. It's just sort of a bonus. So, because it's embedded in the grate, we can't. Yeah. All I can do is mangle it with the with the steel jaws. Okay, let's go ahead and move on then. Moving on. Do you want okay. me to call around, or park, are you going to uh, park that weapon? Yeah, yeah. Next move, Dan. And not yeah. yet. They want to look at the back side of this coral. Yeah, please. Thanks. Stick bubble on number one, please. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, you can push in a bit there. You guys want to? Closer zoom than that of the back Yeah, side. could we get max zoom if you could? There. Oops. Sorry, I'm flying the camera now, not the ROV. No worries. Spastic. This is great. Okay, should be good for full zoom there. Alright, that's as tight as it gets. Right. That looks great. Thank you. Happy with that image? Yes. Okay. Beautiful. Off we go. There's that. Is that an eel way back there that's kind of white looking in the background? Oh, yeah. Maybe another one of those synaphobranchids. Based on that zoom, one of our scientists at the shore is saying that that could be oh. alternative pathies. Alternative pathies? So a different type of black coral, actually. So good thing we got a sample of that. It seems to be sort of an enigma. Are we still collecting the secondary branch or no? No, just the one branch. We're good. Oops. We uh, confirm that it went into sample jar too. Did anyone see it? Yeah, I saw yeah, it. I saw it. Um, which way are you gonna spin? You gotta spin clockwise, right? Okay. All right. That's good because the current didn't want to let me spin counterclockwise. <coughs> okay, Katachi, we're good for 20 meters. Bridge, this is Nev. Uh, can we please move 20 meters at heading 333? Three, three, three. Thank you. 
torch light going off. So, Mom and I, do you want to remind our viewers of what we're doing on our expedition for those of us just tuning in? <laughs> so we're here at uh, an unnamed seamount um, just north of the uh, Papahano Makuikea Marine National Monument, um, looking into um, sort of the geologic history of a chain of bifurcating seamounts. Uh, right now we're on a seamount just north of the monument boundary called Unnamed East. So this is the first time this feature has ever been imaged. It was first mapped um, in an expedition on the Nautilus, NA-134, uh, a few months back. Thank you. I appreciate you. Told you you're good at commentary. <laughs> So we're making our way up this feature, looking at coral diversity, taking some geologic samples. Another one of those glass sponges we sampled earlier in the dive, um, a species we haven't seen at any of the other seamounts so far. Potentially new to science. Atlanta. That's good, thank you. Okay. You could probably, uh, it might be good to come down five pole. Raj. There's some more of that yellow coral there, yeah? Yeah, if we could get a snap zoom on that yellow coral. Uh, yellow one, not seeing it. It's right the where the lasers are. are. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Jeff. Nice and slow. Maybe it's a black coral. I think it is, yeah. Nice spot. I thought that was just down another down one of the pole. Canthogorgias, but no, this is a black like coral. I believe. Disguised. <laughs> More of a yellow tissue color than what we've been seeing. Actually, pseudo alternata type of black coral. Looks you see like that tiny a pink thing off to the corner there too? Yeah, I think that's the snail. Mm. That zoom is great, thank you. Can you name that coral again, please? Pseudo alternata. Pseudo alternata. <laughs> Got it in the chat here. Wow. Is that a sea cucumber? Hmm. Yeah, it good eye. It's, it looks like the, the one you saw earlier. You got a good eye for sea cucumbers, Katashi. I guess it's my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> the Hawaiian word for sea cucumber is loli. Loli? Loli, yeah. Loli. Loli. Might have to start calling you loli. <laughs> <laughs> or you could be loli eye, like sea cucumber eye. <laughs> <clears throat> I think I'm allergic to them. <laughs> Want to push in there, Jeff? It'd be interesting to see the underside of the base of the coral. Yeah. Good thinking. Maybe, <clears throat> maybe a little more. Okay, perfect. A fallen bamboo coral. Okay. The Atlant 
relative to you. Ryan, is their base made out of the same material as the rest of their uh, skeleton? Uh, good question. I, I think so. Wow. Really interesting, the density of bare skeleton here. Are all these uh, Come up bamboo people. corals? I believe so. Most of the living ones in this spot are also at least at some stage of tissue loss. I guess uh, depends on what our our uh, vertical offset is. And it's like a uh, mix of just healthy the and terrain. Yeah, and first. How hard the um, how, how hard I'm fighting to pull the tether out. Like right now, we're stretched out, so the you know, tether is fairly flat, and that and we're getting close to that 20 meter bit. So um, we have a relatively low delta at the minute, so I could stretch out a bit more. But, uh, and I don't think we're quite, I think I'm actually maybe right here, I'm not sure. Let me, uh, I'll move and we'll see. I think so. When you reset, is that automatic, or do you have to pick the pick the smear? closer to Hercules, Paul's kind of coming up a little bit, and then uh, we kind of do that a bit, and it also depends on what we're going to look at, so yeah, it's, you can move again though, if you want. Bridge, this is Nav. Can we get 20 meters at heading 335, please? It depends on the steepness too, Katachi. If it's if it's really steep, it's like you know less moves because we're going up the hill more. If it's flattened out like it is now, we can uh, do you know more moves. Right. So our next move will probably be uh, take more time because the contours are closer together. Uh, see, at the moment it's kind of, it, you know, it's flat. We're not on the steep hill that we were. You can tell by the sonar it's all kind of jumbly yellow and you got a lot of return out 50 meters. Yeah. If it was steep, uh, it would be more red, but it would be, the return would be kind of scrunched up. You can't, you can't see out as far because the sonar is reflecting against the hill. Lots and lots of bamboo coral living and dead. Some chrysogorgids interspersed. A few mushroom corals. Are some of the dead coral not bamboo coral? Okay. Right now I'm, I'm seeing pretty much all bamboo. So I guess the question too is, I mean, over how many years did this place accumulate these dead corals? Like, was this kind of a more sudden die-off, or could some of these dead corals have been here for 
hundreds of years or something. Yeah, that's a very good question. It's funny that, you know, they're just the same, the, the same height, they're, they're just as big as some of the alive ones. Yeah. So it's... Kind of a little flat spot there where they... All decided to call it home. Do you, you think really this is a good place to take an eDNA, or is there like another particular place? It's in mind? quite dense. Uh, it is coral garden, I guess. Yeah, I kind of followed it to the um, southwest there, to where we're actually supposed to be going the other way. You can see in the Argus view. I mean, it's kind of like this in every direction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really, a feel to this. It's pretty. Uh, it's pretty cool. I feel um, the Argus view looks like makes all the foots of the bamboos look like stars. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> Would that make they're definitely Hercules brighter, aren't they? The moon. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be good for another 20 after this moves complete. It's mm -hmm. about four meters left. So. Is tonight the full moon? Oh, I, I, I didn't is. look. You can actually stack them, I, I believe. Them. Is that right, George? I don't know if I've, if I've unlocked that privilege yet. <laughs> <laughs> Stacking the moves? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good for another 20. Bridge, this is Nev. Begins today. Today, tomorrow. Beautiful. How fitting. Uh, once this move is completed, can we get another 20 at uh, heading 335, please? Yes. Southwest detour there. Little sponge Carl just as just escaping the bottom of our screen there. Cool. Was that correct? I missed it. Okay. There's another one just center at the bottom part. Oh yeah, small sponge there. Cool. Can we get a quick zoom on this here? Sure. Go ahead, Jeff. I think we are at tether limits. But I'm coming. We can now push in a little more, nice and slow. Here. That'd be a good rock and coral sample. Okay, <laughs> should be good for the rest. Yeah, this has been a treat being the first watch. We can take samples, put them in the easy boxes. <laughs> <laughs> Word. That looks great, thank you. What is that, Carl? Maybe a primnoid, I'm not sure. I can't I guess we can't call ourselves the ascenders anymore. <laughs> Streak ends. I haven't seen those guys yet, have yeah. we? Yeah. 
we get a quick zoom. You can push in there, Jeff, nice and slow, please. Thank you. Good for a bit more. Quite different polyps. Wow. Whoa. Interesting. Fluffy. What would be the proper term for this? Fluffy? I have full zoom here. Um, there's one in front of me that might be closer if you want a tighter zoom. Uh, yeah, if we could, just trying to get a little better view of the polyps. Is this a bamboo one? Turn trying to figure that out. Yeah, if we could look at the polyps and the base, that would be helpful. Sneak forward a little bit. Say, you want to sneak or you bump? Brian, do these things sting? So, all cnidarians, so that includes corals, jellyfish, um, they're all in the same phylum, and they have these, one of the characteristics of the ph phylum, cnidaria, is um, they all have these stinging cells called nematocysts. Um, they're differently developed in different groups, uh, but they're all, they're present in all the groups, so Someone asked last night how these corals defend themselves against things, uh, and that is one of the ways they have chemical defenses and also stinging cells. This is a really interesting specimen here. Yeah. Too bad we're looking at the backside. This looks, yeah, someone, Asako in the chat says it looks more like a C pen, and I agree with that. So. Is this still an octocoral with its... Kind of e yes. So if you can't really tell here as well, but you would still be able to count the eight tentacles on each polyp. Yeah. Sea pens tend to settle on soft substrates though, so... Interesting. Thank you for the zoom. Ones I remember were white in color too. I don't know. Mm. Okay, I'll take another twenty. Bridge, this is enough. Uh, another twenty meters at heading three three five, please. Yep. Bearing, sorry. It looks sort of like anthoptilum, which is a type of sea pen or rock pen. This guy. Looks like a yellow coral over there. Looks like one of those glass. Yeah, glass sponges sponge. that we just came across and then a sea anemone that just walked out of our sight. Oh, there it is. Hello. Yeah. Another one of those what we're calling rock pens there. 
Did we we don't want we don't want any of these loose looking rocks, yeah? Well, we sort of already got one from this zone. Roger. So I was going to wait till we're up in the next zone. Sounds good. By Thank waypoint you. Three. White primnoid octocoral over to the left. White primnoid. Katachi, what's the depth at waypoint three? Do you know? Uh, I can do a little. Oh, it's probably in the dive plan. I can get it. Oh yeah, yeah, twenty-three thirty-two. How high are we planning to come up on this feature, Dwight? Yeah, so what are we at now? Hmm. Yeah, twenty-three thirty-two. Yeah, twenty-four oh nine. The end of the dive is twenty-one forty-four. Okay. So just only two hundred, two hundred and fifty meters. I can move faster through here if we're falling behind. This is a real funny comment. Um, just finished a few of the first episodes of Stranger Things, but I have to say these are some even stranger things. <laughs> <laughs> incredible what's in our oceans. I agree. It's incredible. Every time we come down, it's different, too. That's what keeps us interesting. We didn't get to do a, a roll call yet. Roll call. You want to start us off? Are we down for a intro of the, the watch members. It's fine, sure. Cool. Halfway through. Yeah. A little more than halfway through. What should be our question that follows our name and title? <laughs> we did ice cream last night. Hmm. <coughs> Good for another 20, Kentucky. Bridge, this is Nev. You're good at these, not me. I know, I'm thinking. Let's see. Let's let's share no. what we believe Please our move. eye color is. Another twenty meters at bearing three three five. Thank you. Might need some help. Okay. Aloha mai kako ova o malanai kane kuhivinui. My name is Malanai. I. Um, I'm the Science Communication Fellow slash Educator or Kumu Ike slash Meha Olelo. I believe my eye color is dark brown. I agree. I'm going to zoom in there, Jeff. Nice and slow, please. What is that? Oh, what? Oh, yeah. oh that's that? a Chanakops. Chanakops. That believe. sounds like a Pokemon. Oh. One of those. <laughs> <laughs> Frowny little angler fish. Yeah, they're oh, funny. So oh cute. wow. Always a fan favorite. The Cops. Man, it even looks like a Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> this is Pokemon Go oh, on a whole nother level. Are we gonna try and catch it this time? <laughs> no. We didn't bring the Pokeball attachment. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a bad landing. And another what looks like a sea pen in the sediment there. Yeah. Uh, sorry, guys and girls. No problem. The camera has a mind of its own. Just hanging out there. Chani Clops. The name even sounds like a it's a Pokemon. Yeah. Chani Clops. Yeah. <laughs> what type would it be? Besides oh, water, I, I guess. I think water is <laughs> probably the best guess. Okay, Maybe no. rock. Uh, I've completely ruined the landing. Should be there.
They're very cute. Okay. They have little feet. Yeah. They? Okay. Push it a bit more. Kind of perch up on their hind. <laughs> I guess they're dorsal fins, right? Or yeah. Uh, modified sorry, fins. Pe pectoral yeah. fins. Not pectoral is what I meant. Yeah. Wow. <coughs> Look at there, guys. We found ourselves oh. tiny clops. <laughs> Look at its big, big blue eyes. You can see its fins holding itself up against the rocks there. I'm getting carried Interesting sort away. of between the eyes, how it's... Looks like it has a hole can in Can you see face. its little angler thing? Oh, oh it's, it's opening. Gulp. Showing <laughs> off. Oh, the gulp. Whoa. Oh, oh my talk God. about oh. aliens. Whoa. Oh. Is that like a yawn? <laughs> it looked like... To me, that was like, I might want to eat eat it, or maybe I don't want to eat it. What, I want, what what do these things eat? Do we know? I'm not sure. Uh, Pokey blocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's not oh, it's doing it again? <coughs> not impressed by our ROV. Yawn. <laughs> Yawn. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Wow. Whoa. I've never seen one do that. That is cool. That is next level chocho lips. <laughs> <laughs> are are those things on its skin the same as what's on a coral? No. I don't think so. You can kind of see through him. He's a little bit translucent. Yeah. And does it also attract prey with light? Do all anglerfish do that? That's a good question. I'm not sure. Its lure is really small compared to... Most so angler fish. Copy. Don't frame out our seatbelt. <laughs> the fish is getting all the attention right now. Asako, sorry. <laughs> Very rare. Do you want to see the sea pen to the right? Yeah. <laughs> Boom. <guess>. Okay. <laughs> you should uh, tag that yawn for a highlight. Yeah. I'll, I'll quote yawn. Yawning Chaniclops. That's so cool. That's going to be my answer if somebody asks what's the coolest thing you've seen. <laughs> the fish I yawn. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that'll be yeah, fish be able to my new screensaver. Well, we didn't get far with introductions, did we? <laughs> 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 we were distracted. Hi, my name is Yawning Chonoclops, and I'm an <laughs> ROV pilot. <laughs> and I've got terrifying <laughs> deep blue eyes. <laughs> and in Hawaiian, you would be Mokuru, <laughs> Kia Awaya, or Ia Maikopo Uli Uli, Kone Kolepe. That's to my Hawaiian eyes, right? Chonoclops. Oh, for real. Hey, I'm sitting off to the right. I'm the navigator. My name is Katachi. What color are your eyes, oh, Katachi? Uh, I think they're dark brown. Thank you, Katachi. You are the Ho'okele. That looks like a sea anemone. Like a yeah, I thought it was a star at first. I was going to ask for a zoom, but... Just an anemone. Who's next, Mom and I? Uh, let's have Fiona. Let's Fiona. Let hit it. Mm, hi, everybody. I'm Fiona. I'm the ocean science intern for this leg, um, and my eyes are brown. Thank you, Fiona. You are a a haumana or a hueao and you are training to become a Kanaka Epikema or Akiakamai. Mahalo. Um, Dwight, since the camera's on you. Ah, good. Yes, I'm Dwight Coleman. I am a marine geologist from the University of Rhode Island, Graduate School of Oceanography, and I am the expedition leader on this leg. And my eyes are hazel, whatever color that is. Brownish green, 
Why don't you smile into the camera there and maybe this one right here in front of, uh, <laughs> oh, in front this of Ryan. One. There you go. Awesome. Thank you, Dwight. You are the Alaka'i. You are also a Kanaka Epikema and Akiakamai. Mahalo. You want to go, Ryan? Sure. My name is Ryan Gasparo. I'm uh, a PhD student at Temple University, um, biologist on the science team on this cruise, and my eyes are green. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Awesome. You are a Kanaka Epikema Akiakamai. Mahalo. Mm -hmm. We've got the front row. Dan the man. Um, Dan operating in the Hercules vehicle tonight. Uh, blue eyes. Mm -hmm. At least that's what it says on my driver's license. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Dan. What what color are your eyes? Who's? So, so are you talking to me still? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, blue eyes. Says. Blue eyes. And he is a, he is a Pailaka Mokulu'u mok or um, Mokulu'u Kia Awaya. <clears throat> Our Tony Klops shall share his real name, <laughs> Paul. Oh yeah, so my <laughs> real name is Paul. Uh, I think all my other information was true though. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I am an ROB pilot with blue eyes. Awesome, thank you. You are a Pailaka Mokulu'u or Mokulu'u Kia Awaya. And... Yeah. Jeff's busy punching all the cameras around. Uh, I'm Jeff, I'm the video guy, and I have brown eyes. And notice that I don't put myself on the screen. <laughs> Thank you for pushing He's on in the, the shadows, hiding in the shadows. I'm hiding in the shadows, right, right over here. There you go. Thank you for the wave. You are the uh, Kanaka Paivikio. Um, you want me to pronounce my name one more time? Um, Malanai. Oh, you want my last name? Kane Kuahivinui. My mom's last name is Kane, and my dad's last name is Kuahivinui. And then we already, ha I have someone gave us a suggestion for our next round of introductions. Uh, what you guys wanted to be when you grew up. So I'm going to hold that <laughs> for our next watch. Thank you, viewers. Still snowing in Sweden. Wow. It's been cold here, I think. It's, it's, it, I've been chilly. Is it like this at all in Oahu, ever? Mm, not where I live. It may or may not get this cold up in Wahiawa, the higher parts of the island, but I wouldn't say Oahu. I believe Hawaii Island might get this cold, especially yeah. near the, the mountain tops or where Ipo lives in Waimea. Take a look at this coral here. Sure. Okay, push in nice and slow, Jeff. Thank you. I think that's a paragorgid, maybe uh, civigogorgia we were seeing the other day. More. What was that, Ryan? I think this is Sibigogorgia. 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 That was at least that was the white pair of we were seeing the other day. The, the stalks are almost iridescent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really fun to try and follow focus on this too. There we go. <coughs> few 
anemones on that coral as well. Does that impact the health of the coral? That's a good question. It definitely does overgrow some of the polyps. Um, so overall, I think the coral's still pretty okay, but it is locally impacted at the site of overgrowth. Happy with that image now? Yeah, looks good, thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Oh, also, can we, sorry, can we take a zoom on this sea pen to the right of it? Sure. I missed it. Can uh, push back in a bit. Interesting. We haven't seen any of these on other dives, and now we're we're seeing a good number of them. Looks like an overturned cup okay. coral right below it too. Great, thank you. Ready for another move? No, we're uh, right under Argus at the moment, so and we're on the steep hill again. So I'm gonna You're see how the thin, yeah. ba ba thin band on the sun are now. I'm gonna uh, come up the hill and get get away from the nova first. Giving me kupu kupu vibes. The sea pens that we're identifying. Like what? the fern version on land. So oh, cool. yeah. Is the white coral also called cauliflower coral? That's a new one for me. Um, it could be. Um, yeah, I did. It uh, might be a common name I don't know about. Possibilities are endless. People get pretty, pretty creative with the names. A couple of foots without their stalks there. Yeah. So that might be the current snapping that off mm. and then just the sort of basal part remains. like to give out a big aloha to all our viewers. Aloha mai kako, dear United States, Canada, Australia, United Kingdom, Norway, Germany, Taiwan, Netherlands, Japan, Finland, Barbados, Austria, United Arab Emirates, um, Hawaii. I knew I know New Zealand was tuning in earlier. Sometimes some countries don't actually pop up on here, so. And there's others watching on YouTube too, right? Right, and I don't actually see who who's tuning in on YouTube, but sometimes our our viewers comment, and I can see your guys' comments, letting me know more about that. Have you found any angler fish this year? Uh, I did 30 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah. scientist ashore from Russia now. tuning in. Oh, hi. Tina hi, Russia. Molotsova. Thanks for being with us. Yes. Yeah, all good. Another sea anemone over there that looks like that fly trap looking one. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna take this opportunity here where there's not a lot of diversity and uh, drop one of our ballast weights. Let's start with the uh, left one because we got double there. Yep.
The Kiwis are still here. Thank you. How do we watch other than YouTube? Nautiluslive.org. Yeah, nautiluslive.org. Oh, oh. oh, it's all right. Slide it out of there. Jenga. Total Jenga. I get to push it back in. I was able to tie those two. I helped to tie those two Beautiful. to the vessel. Nice work. Cool. Nice job. Your DNA will forever be at the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> OMG, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Might show up you in did. the eDNA samples later on instead. Interesting. Uh -huh. You did such a good job, I couldn't even see the top one. <laughs> <laughs> that is the goal, I guess. Hmm? What is the smelliest thing you've ever brought back to the surface? <laughs> That's coming horrible. straight from the... There you go. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've worked at methane seeps a few times um, where things like methane and uh, hydrogen sulfide are leaking out from the sea yeah. floor. And when you bring that back up, it's a pretty strong smell. Um, Anoxic mud. Yeah. Ugh. Black. Not my favorite. Yeah, mud. Get um, it up on deck, it stinks like rotten eggs. Mm. As far as animals, uh, when we bring up a sponge, like we took a nice chunk of a sponge the other night. Um, okay, Katachi, you can. We dry those out. Another 20. Um, Bridge, this is enough. Those are pretty pungent. <laughs> pungent. Life. Pungent sponge. Pungent sponge. Can we please move 20 Probably meters, any animal that uh, at dries five starts Barrett. to smell after a little while. That's why we keep most of them in the freezer and the refrigerator. <laughs> I uh, don't work in the science lab, but there was the dive with the whale fall, and we spent a while swimming around, and I think the vehicles kind of came up with a layer of blubber all over them, and we had, <laughs> you know, chunks of whale fat in the slurp that we had to clean out. Wow. It was, uh, just being on deck, that was the <laughs> worst one for me. Pretty much the whole boat was. <laughs> can take a zoom, is that what you like? Yeah, we can see this sea star. I think it's... Push it nice and easy there, Jeff. Same species we were seeing yesterday, feeding on bamboo coral. Is this the culprit that's eating all the other ones? <laughs> <laughs> this is the one. <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty good. <laughs> well fed. The sea star is living the absolute life right here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm imagining... Uh, well, there it is in action, right? <laughs> he's, he's stripped that, that stock pretty clean. <laughs> Highlight. This is the real life, Patrick. Totally. <laughs> okay, thanks. I once saw on one of the dives, it was one of those sea stars that have, you know, a lot of legs and kind of the two feet on top as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it was eating a rockfish, which just blew my mind that the fish kind of like let itself get caught. And uh, their two know. feet are, are really strong, so I could see where it just gets its suckers on it. Basically, can't get away. Aren't rockfish pretty venomous too? Mm-hmm. Like they're related to sculpins or something. You really really shouldn't step on them. I know in Australia there's a very dangerous species of rockfish. It's one of the things you're warned about walking around. Do uh so rockfish can hand they live at the deep depths but they'll also live at shallow depths as well? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think there's a book in the lounge that it's like rockfishes of the Pacific and there's like three thousand. <laughs> oh my <laughs> different, gosh. Different kind. <laughs> My uh, <laughs> ROV pilot knowledge just kind of caps out at rockfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> we take a quick zoom on this sponge. Don't know if we've seen that one yet today. Sure. That looks like right, one of the ahead, ones yeah. we collected on one of the first dives. Yeah. It does. Okay. There's a stylosterid coral just on the left side of the screen. A little white one. There's that very translucent looking thing off to the side too behind those red. Mm -hmm. I think that's a sponge too. Looks like it has an eye. Oh yeah, there's something hanging out on it. Did you name that coral, that, um, that sponge? I think it's a euplectalid, but I might be wrong. Good for another 20. Bridge, this is Nav. Please take another 20 meters at bearing 335. Hello, Cape Town, South Africa. Does anyone in the control room know what Sir, Sir Stroming is and have any? has anyone tried it? That that was pretty random. That's like the real. Like, I feel like I watched that. That's like one of the smelliest canned fish in the world. Mm. Oh. So strumming. I might. I don't know. I might be wrong. I've never heard of this word before. So. We're on the subject of smells. Huh? So strumming. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Oh. Yeah, that's the one. Is, is that the same person that asked about about the smelliest thing? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. This, these two people didn't sign their comments, so I cannot tell. <laughs> I don't think I want to know what it is. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole bunch of YouTube videos on it, so if you don't want to try it, you can see. <laughs> Thank you. What is the name of that lily? Yeah, so there's a crinoid sitting at the top of this coral. Crinoid. Get a little, get in tight on that, that'd be good. Yeah, go ahead and push it a bit, too. Yeah. These are called feather stars. Feather stars. This is actually on our wish list. So if we can oh. take a sample of that, that'd be great. Oh, we can. It's really interesting color gradient going from purple to white there. Sample time, all right. I'm gonna come up just a few because I think I'm gonna drift over top of you. Do you want to hold position? So we think uh, this yeah, is you can hold position. Sathy Rometra. The Bridge, genus this name. is Nav. I'll get it. Please hold position. It's that one. Uh, no, this is 18. Yep. Where are we going for? Well, let me come around here and see if I can park the tail of the RV. Can we slurp it? Help. Yeah. Or do we want a piece of the coral, too? Uh, is that one of the ones that will jump off? It might. Probably slurps the easiest thing then, huh? Yeah, it's uh, two meters. 
just tall there, and I don't know if I can get the vehicle to hold still. I might have to do an on-the-fly slurp. Let's try an on-the-fly slurp and see what happens. Might be good. Oh no, I lost it. Oh. Thank you. And it work. Perfect. A little more left. Rotate left a little more. Want me to come out a little bit more? Um, no, I actually want you to come closer to the front porch with it. Oh, we want to be in more so I have less of a moment to deal with there. Raj. No, uh, what am I doing? Hurt hydraulics. Can't do hurt hydraulics. But can you? Uh, yeah, I can operate the slurp. I'm just going to come up another couple. Right. I think we've got plenty of tether. Should be good on the altitude there, 20 some meters. So someone asked yep. a question of how do we determine which animals we want to collect for samples. Um, so Chris Kelly, our lead scientist ashore, um, who's been working in this area a long time, he's a sponge biologist amongst other things, uh, really an expert in all invertebrates. Um, he has a few things on a wish list, things that um, are not well characterized or need to be described better or for whatever reason. So we have a wish list there and we have a few other scientists ashore who are interested in certain All different right. types of Are we of good on slurp jar three here? Sponge. I think so. And so we choose based on that mostly. You've got the uh, suction already on? No, you can turn it on. Oh, I think it's still on actually. 80. If anything looks new and interesting basically is what we want to collect. Ah, I lost the plot there. Below me. another sea star. Oh yeah. Eating bamboo coral. Um, you guys remember where it was? I lost the plot. Looked like a jellyfish that just went by. Mm. I took my eyes off it. Sorry. Me too. Uh, I'd be guessing. Fiona, do you remember what it was on? back up and I'll do it again. Maybe it took off, if it was a swimming one. How do we open the, the gallery again? I took a few photos of oh, the surrounding area, so maybe Sorry. we can. Swing around to the north oh. just a little bit. Just an idea. It's not here on the left, is it? Nope. 
Oh, okay. It's a brittle start. Check out up some of those. To yeah, yeah, straight ahead. And Yeah, that's it. Yep. yep. I saw your uh, Rob Nav green line went. Yeah. There was one one up there. Good eye, Paul. Just trying to recreate the Nav screen <laughs> smear. Okay, <laughs> suction on. Uh, yeah, T six eighty percent. Yeah, eighty will work. And I'm just gonna hold the arm here. Yeah, Reg. Can you uh, tighten up a bit, Jeff? You want to put the bubble cam on it too? Yep. Oh, good. Oh. Pilot induced oscillation. Do you want an arm move, or you got uh, it? Once I get really close, then you can uh, move the arm around. Otherwise, we'll just chase each other around. Raj. Okay, you can do what you gotta do. Oh. Come on over, little buddy. get him from the back side. Looks like it hurts. We got this. Oh, I think that's going to be a snip and, s snip and slurp. We've got a couple we pieces. We can try it one more time. I'll get close there, Paul. Can you come home Kay. with us, please? Did you see a piece go into the bucket? I did, I did. I did see a little, Can and I saw like the dark section the and the white the section of a leg. There, you can see it kind of swimming around in there. There is a piece in there. There is a piece in there, yep. Oh, nice. Awesome sample, thank you. Nicely done. I don't see it in the jar yet. It'll get there. Uh, Stow the slurp. Go, uh, go away, Jeff. To the, uh, bring your hose in and out a few times. What's the name of that thing again? Crinoid. Crinoid? Okay, okay, sorry. Let me uh, turn the I'm section off. Just enough space to fit in the Is that with a Y or, a, or an I? C-R-I. C-R-I, thank you. Is it still stuck in the nozzle? Yeah, keep going. Uh, oh, there we go. And, uh, there we go. All right. Nice. All right. That's Beauty. awesome. Okay, now you can stop it. Ready for a move? Uh, no, let me get out from underneath the Atlanta there. Get back on track. Hmm. Oh, no. Thought we were going to be close enough.
Nice job. A little closed jaw love tap there. Yeah. <laughs> Beauty. Coming up a little bit. Just saw a crab. That was the first one I've seen so far this time. The chance you can uh, go back to flush there. Oh, yeah. sea star on the bamboo coral over there it looks like all right back on flush i'll swap the camera which thing the uh camera yeah oh you you got it wasn't listening to me Oh, there's another one of the uh, <laughs> things we just oh, slurped. Yeah. How about that? Crinoid. It's always right after you sample something, you start to see it. That is the rule. That if one you get it. Way too easy. <laughs> 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 well, it's reassuring to know you didn't pull the only one. That's mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. That's the way to look at it, do we? But if we successfully sample one, there definitely are others around. That's the uh, that's the rule. Yeah. Can we take a look at over here? There's a sort of glass sponge sitting at the top of that sure. skeleton. It looks like also a nice specimen of this bigger glass yeah, sponge. Yeah, look at that. Oh no, that's it's on a stock. Oh yeah. So we don't have to zoom on that. But Enjoying this view, looking that's straight a great down. Great shot this into the great. sponge. Yeah, look at that. Crazy. Can I zoom in a bit there, Jeff? like to look down on that's always fun. Nobody's home there. Do animals ever live in those holes? Oh yeah, yeah, quite often you find um, shrimp or small crabs in there. Okay, off we go. Are we uh, ready for a ship move? Uh, we our way to waypoint three. Yeah, about halfway. let's do it. Bridge, this is Nav. Can we please move 20 meters at bearing So sorry, I cannot read whatever language this is. Looks like Spanish, but I don't. Another glass, glass sponge there. I do speak some Spanish. I don't know if it's going to be enough to translate that.
up. So all sorry. these ID cards don't have the common names, do they? No. On the wish list, I wrote some common names, but. Another crinoid. Same one, I didn't see it. It was a, a little bit darker through to the oh. ends, whereas the other one was like really light. Shall I highlight it so we can reach back to it at another point in time? No, I think that's okay. Okay. Another crinoid there. I hope you guys correct me if I'm yeah. wrong. No, you're right. And, and another one. sponge there. Yeah, they've got a nice Walteria glass sponge too. I think that's the first one we've seen on this dive. Walteria glass sponge. Yeah, those are the sort of hairy looking ones. We collected um, oh, yeah. a branching morph of that type of sponge yesterday. This one has a little bit different morphology than the ones I've seen so far. Push in a bit there if you want, Jeff. Uh, see an enemy down there. Yeah, an enemy on glass sponge. Interesting. The, the wall area glass sponge we, I feel like we only saw like one singular column, whereas this one seems to have like branches. Yeah, this is a, a different looking one. We've seen a few branched ones before, but none that look like this, really. Seems to be a reoccurring theme for this area. Lots of branch corals that... Right, we're seeing similar things because the last time, but more, more branchy. Looks like a cactus. Yeah, it really does. Uh -huh. Has that... Cactus and there's the a few what looks like can't tell what some arthropods living inside of it. Oh maybe. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Looks like a shrimp top Anemone. branch. Uh, push in a bit more if you want. Get the polyps or whatever those are on there. Spicules, I guess. Shrimp, perhaps, are stuck inside there. Yep, that's a shrimp. Huh. Really delicate morphology of these Walteria sponges. It's so interesting. Looks like a little worm on there too. They look like they're trapped inside the yeah. shrimp. That does happen. They sometimes, as yeah. juveniles, get in there and then they grow too large to get out. Bars of the sea of the glass sponge. Yep. It's a beautiful little colony of organisms here. Yeah. Pretty good diversity. I mean. We're good. Uh, yeah, I was trying to get the DSC on there. I can't quite get it centered. Four different types of coral, two different types of glass sponge, all in that little area. Okay, good for another 20. 
I will... Bridge, this is Nav. Bridge to Nav. Nav to Bridge. Can we please move 20 meters at bearing 330? for samples we have two rocks and a uh, piece of sponge um, and then a couple niskins crinoid we've yeah, got, we've a got three two slurps. rocks crinoid and a small black branch of coral, coral sponge and one eDNA oh I forgot about the black coral yeah there's one of those crinoids on that bamboo coral there it's going to come around this way a few of those. here to the left I'll just spin around to keep you in view, and Roger. Think you'll, you'll run out ahead when I come up the hill here. Another beautiful little colony of organisms on here. I really want to get up on top of this ridge because I think it'll change a bit. Yeah. cluster in there. Can't quite get over there. I think we'll make it uh, to waypoint, or which waypoint are you hoping to get to? Yeah, I'd like to get to four, but um, that's cutting it close. Yeah. I think we could do waypoint three. Yeah. Mm. Plenty of time. I'm having a hard time trying to see if these are more so all alive compared to half alive, half dead, Carl. You mean compared to earlier? Yeah. Yeah. I think so it's. I think it look, it's looking healthier. I agree mm -hmm. a little bit. Still seeing some dead ones. I think it was that sea star from earlier that kind of <laughs> munched its way up. <laughs> And it's still making its way up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I keep waiting for us to crest, and there be some ginormous sea star. Hundred year old fat <laughs> sea star. I've seen a few of these bolosoma sponges knocked over too. So another indication that the current can really rip on this slope. So is this our first watch without a launch or in the center a descent? It, it is, is, yeah. It is. We're good for another 20. Bridge, this is Nev. Can I come up a bit? I know we're pretty stretched out. But sure, yeah, you can come up a little. Come back over to the in front of you. Just follow on the... Please move another 20 meters at bearing 330. Very trippy view of 
Argus, look, I mean Atalanta looking at Hercules. Yeah, gives you a really good perspective on how many of these corals there are. Do crinoids move or are they an attached growth? So they tend to be sessile, so they hang out in one place, usually a high vantage point. Um, but if disturbed, they can actually swim. They'll sort of wave their arms about. And oh, we just saw one swimming earlier, yeah? Yeah, we did. At the beginning of the dive, we saw one swimming. Comment from the readers. Um, I like to see the sampling. Makes me want to try to build my own little sub to discover the lakes close by. Greetings from Germany. Greetings, Germany. Mm -hmm. I will say each year I come out here and then I pretty much want to get my own little robotic arm for home to practice on and play with. <laughs> and what year is this of you joining, <laughs> of you being a part of the team? <laughs> Fourth? Have you done it yet? No, not yet. What can we do to help that? <laughs> help, help you make um, that possible? Well, if uh, if we ever upgrade the arms on Hercules, you know, out. <laughs> you got tips. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's how it works, but that would be my dream. Uh, <laughs> set up a go set up a GoFundMe account for <laughs> Paul's robotic arm. <laughs> I wonder if your fiftieth birthday will finally get there. <laughs> We used to have a couple old raptors around for spare parts or something like that, didn't we? Yeah. Can we take a look at this sponge over here? Sure. I'm constantly just blown away by Ryan's ability to just see something and be like, we need to look at that. <laughs> stare at the sea floor long enough you you start to realize what's different you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. push in a bit there if you want to yeah. It's like a glass sponge. Yep. Huakayaniani. On an old dead guy. Yeah, it looks like maybe m most of it is dead. It's oh. a little bit like the. I got a cover. Yeah, there right. only matadae sponges we have in our guide? Uh, just hold it for a sec there, let me get a shot. Not sure, Brad. Okay, Jeff, push in again. Really see all the pores of the sponge. You zoom in tight on it like that. Feels like it's calmed down a little bit. That's great, or thank not. you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you can come up if you want now, thank you. Cool. That beautiful pink, what is that one? Hemichorallium. Hemichorallium. Another 20 soon. Sooner now. Oh. Yeah, you can try out and keep them moving. Bridge, this is Nev. Uh, please make another, uh, move another 20 Jeff. meters at bearing Sorry. 340. Yep. Right. 
Looks like there's some downhill in our future. Yeah. Can we do a snap zoom over here too? Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jeff. Partially dead. Yeah, when we let it drift, I am. Yeah. It looks like there might be some something growing on it. Maybe stoloniferins again. Type of octocoral. Oh, look at that little baby coral right little there. Little baby. It's we look just baby. a little further down at the bottom of it. Yeah. <laughs> look like potentially stoloniferin octocorals growing on it. That's great, thank you. Yeah, when we're letting it drift. Uh, no, that's the, actually, that's the speed of the ROV. So, but when we're getting a current measurement, what I'm doing is just letting the ROV drift with the, We've with got the a current. Lot of and then I'm looking at that. So, yeah, as I goose it here. It ROV inspired of fellows. Speed of tuning speed in. Speed over ground goes up and down. I think that's from the DBL. Uh, this person to start an uh, engineering project for a school, which is a small ROV for depths up to 600 meters. Greeting, greetings to you, Austria. That's pretty deep, Chris. Yeah, 600, impressive. Question, what do the names of the seamounts mean translated from Hawaiian? So actually, these seamounts are unnamed right now. And I, um, the, the entire ridge is named Lili'uokalani. That is the name of our um, last reigning monarch of Hawaii before Hawaii was illegally annexed. But um, this seamount is unnamed East Seamount. And we have we just came from unnamed West Seamount and I think unnamed North Seamount before that. And uh, Do you know anything about the naming process and how these Seamounts might get names going forward? Um, does everyone on board um, or the main scientists will be collecting data and writing down all the characteristics of these places and um, they'll be sending all this information to the Papahana Mokoakemari National Monument um, Cultural Working Group. And though that group of um, individuals will be working on uh, finding an appropriate name for these seamounts. Yes. Like a new, uh, cool, thank you. Let's do a 40 meter move this time. Bridge, this is Nev. What would you name it? Well, if you could, if you had the, all the power of naming. We go 40 out. meters at bearing 340. Hmm. As I think about this question, I, I'm thinking about branchy because of how all the corals are very branchy over here. Yeah. But um, yeah. quick question for Dan. What is your favorite part yeah, about being the pilot for Hercules? Oh. And this is definitely pretty much it right here. The driving part. Yeah, the flying part's the... Definitely the 
happens to juice. But my favorite part of flying is um, well, the, the high diversity of this is obviously very interesting, but I personally like the uh, vertical cliffs. Very rugged terrain. really interesting on the on the verticals because we can uh, we can see better because the cameras on the front of the vehicle so we can get really close to stuff yeah we've hit a really really steep part of the dive here <coughs> thank you back back to answering Ryan's okay I got it speaking of vertical I gotta go in the wrong way <laughs> I'm going to spin around here. Sorry, guys. Right here. Oh, my gosh. I just, um, I just looked up on our online Hawaiian dictionary branch and um, there is la la, mana, oha, or mana mana nui, kamahele. I kind of like this kamahele being small branch. Um, could be like a hekoa kamahele, like a, the corals that have kamahele that are the branching corals. And then if I broke down the word kama, it, it means child, and then hele is to go. And I kind of like this um, this imagery that I'm receiving when I read this certain part because this seamount itself is actually branching off of the main seamount that we originally started at. So the seamount itself is, is a kamahele of the main and then the biodiversity that we're seeing on the seamount is also kamahele to its main biodiversity that we saw on the main um, the first initial seamounts. That's if that's if you were asked. This is my immediate question. Where I'm. That's very fitting. Yeah, but all ideas. Lots of loose rocks. Thank you. Did the current change? Argus is on a different side of the ship now, huh? No, we're just we're uh, just dragging it through the water. Yeah. Yeah, we we're doing uh, more constant moves now. Yeah. Let it flatten out a bit there. Gotcha. You guys aren't asking for stops as much, so we're kind of trying to yeah, keep, keep it moving. Yeah, keep going. Is that a little lobster or a crab right there, or? Yeah, I think uh, I think this the too. top of this big ridge coming up is going to be nice, a little bit mm. different. Yeah, we're kind of going downhill right now and going yeah. sideways there. Looks like there's some uphill in our future there, according to as a tech. You know on ROV nav, it says depth and then negative 9999. Is there something not communicating properly to get the depth on uh, ROV nav? Where are you seeing all the nines? Yeah. No. Oh, yeah, that's not accurate. <laughs> right. Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if there was a way to, because I, I prefer this screen back here, actually, but um, yeah, I, like, I like to be able to see the depth, too. Do you have a Grafana screen up? Yep, I do, actually. Yeah. Uh, I should just, I, have, I, could, uh, I could just put that in a little small corner, I guess, yeah. Maybe that's what I'll do. Yeah, we almost need it on a big screen somewhere. You could steal the uh, bow if that's helpful. Jeff could probably put a Grafana in the uh, little blank box up there. Actually, I can't because I'm out of converters. Oh, uh, sorry. I need to buy some. That's okay. 
I would love to have a Grafana. As a no, you're right. I could, I could just show the Grafana source. in a corner, maybe. Yeah, that's a good. Um, we we take a look at that. It looks maybe the, like something different. Sorry, did something you wanted to see? Yeah, it's just to the. We take a little look to the right. I'll circle it again. Yeah, over here. So I'll circle it again. The stock guy. Yeah, it looks. I can't tell if that's sponge or a piece of dead coral. Uh, that doesn't look like anything. We don't need to zoom on it, actually. Roger. <coughs> Whatever it is, it's got squat lobsters sitting on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I take it back. Maybe we should zoom on it. Yeah, let's zoom in. Oh, he was them. looking at the uh, white thing on the rock. I can look at the uh, squatties. Yeah, let's take a zoom on that. presenting themselves so beautifully there. Yeah, it's a nice shot. Isn't that on Chris Kelly's wish list? Did we have that? Uh, the squat lobsters? Yeah. I don't think so. Not this. Not this particular one? Uh, there was actually. I think the orange colored ones, but I'm not sure. Yeah, and there's ones with fuzzy arms he was interested in. I don't know if it's... Push in there, Jeff. You're going to gross everybody out. It's a nice shot. Yeah, that's cool. Oh yeah, these don't have fuzzy arms. The orange eyes really get me. You can really see it reaching up into the current looking for things to catch. Watch those guys for hours, but in Atlanta presses on. Can we take a look at this? Sure. That might be a tuna kit that we're interested in. Uh, push in again if you want, Jeff. You think we could slurp one of these? Yep. You want to, uh, oh, he's almost there. He's fine. He's there. Yep. Yeah, he's there. What is that? What are those tennis balls? They're tuna kits, we think. Oh. It's a type of filter feeding organism. So we're going to slurp? Yep. Yeah. More like a scrape, but a scrape and slurp. Oh, I scraped one already. Your sample's still on the porch. Probably will be until recovery. Oh, come on, Herc. Hold still. Which one are we going for? Uh, this one looks good. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm gonna go for the hockey puck. What jar number are we on now? 
Should be four. Yep. Uh, ready for some zoom? Yeah, let's do it. Push in there for him so he can see the nozzle. About to drop there too. Turn kit, Ryan? Tuna kit, yeah. Tuna kit. You ready? Yep. And slurps on? Yep. Interesting. Maybe it isn't tuna kit. Looks more like sponge to me. What is that? A sea squirt, right? They're yep. a little softer and. Uh, yeah, this is sponge. Is that uh, enough of a sample? Yes, thank you. Yeah, we probably maybe not a tuna kit. It's probably a sponge instead. It looked like one though. Is that the shape? And the yeah. I don't think we've seen this sponge either. So, still interesting. Geoded sponge. Looks, looks like that, too. Oh, yeah. What kind of sample was this? Uh, sponge. Sponge. <laughs> when all else fails, <laughs> it's a sponge. It a sponge. Yeah. Oh, you're working it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, oh. we're biting each other. <laughs> Uh, oh God. We want to collect anything else, or do you? We want uh, another ship move. Uh, let me get back out to the uh, north there. Yeah, we're due for a rock sample at Waypoint Three, but um, I think I'll let uh, Val's coming on watch uh, at twenty Roger. minutes or so. So I think I'll let her her pick it. Copy that. Well, maybe we could find some before we go off watch. Maybe we can find a bunch and just, you know, pick them up, put them on the front porch, and just yeah. do a lot of manipulator work just to prep it for them. <laughs> <laughs> I think somebody yeah, wants we, to practice. Yeah, we, <laughs> we stack them all, you know. Make you got to make those uh, rock uh, Oh, yeah, 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 towers. yeah, right. Make a rock tower, then they can make Jenga which one they want out. Got some interesting in a bit. sponge in stuff happening here. It's a lot of sponge in one area. Yeah, it, really, it looks like maybe That's some of it graveyard. rolled downhill or something. Yeah. Maybe not. Can you come back down now, Paul? Yep. It looks like there's a Brazingid sea star on there as well. Brazingid. Is this so another glass sponge? It is, yeah. It's the type of sea star that is actually sessile. It stays in one place typically and filter mm. feeds. Rather than it's got the a lot sea of stars arms. who, yeah, rather than the ones that roam around eating bamboo coral, for example. Does that mean these ones are unable to move? You know, I think I think they can move to some degree, but it's uh, they're not very motile at all. They they typically stay stay put. I'll hold tight for a second. I'll just wander over the. Well, not that tight. <laughs> Back out a little. Hmm. 
Yeah, this looks like it maybe could have rolled from the top of the ridge or something. Yeah, it could be. Looks like the rock fell over. Put some sediment on it, actually. Yeah. Could we come in any tighter on these corals here? Yeah, absolutely. Those are very interesting. Sort of pink in the center. Huh. Huh. Oh, wow. They look like they're attached individually. Yeah. Yeah, they are. I'm kind huh. of stumped. I don't know what that is. It's interesting. The center it really looks like a flower with that yeah, they're pretty. bit in the center. Is this on the wish list or just a surprising find? I'm looking. I don't see it on the wish list, but surprising find. Yeah, cool. Awesome. You good or you want yeah. a different angle there? No, that was great. Thank you. Sako on the chat says that was a solitary hydroid. Interesting. Okay, good for another 20. Bridge, this is Nev. 20, you said? Yes, please. Can we move 20 meters at bearing 350? Never get tired of looking down the Zoom in just a bit. Yeah, yeah perfect. Thanks. Not quite the right angle. <laughs> okay, thanks. All of those species have had nothing in them. No, they haven't. Yeah, no one's been home. Charging too much rent. Yeah. <laughs> How many empty uh, spots? Uh, spots do we have in the bio? Plenty. Not a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. How about for, oh, ro for rocks? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, plenty. For eDNA, is it just that, like random, or is it when there's high diversity? Yeah, high diversity, uh, which we haven't. We, we forgot to get last time. Mm. But I was sort of waiting till we get up on this ridge because I think that's where we'll see more okay. more high diversity. Mm. So that would mean collecting more Niskins up there. Just right past waypoint three? Come to uh, 330. Well, Hold yeah, it's probably more like where waypoint four is up here. Oh, okay. Well, the uh, watch right before us set us up perfectly for uh, as soon as we got to the seafloor, and we're pretty much going to set it up perfectly for the next watch for some of these cool waypoints. 
Yeah, we don't have too much time left. I know Paul's dying to use the manipulator. <laughs> so how about with, and we have lots of empty spots. So let's let's go for a rock. Why not? Roger. <laughs> this is a good rock oh. spot. Yeah, oh, get yeah. Your, get your weapon ready. Is this uh, unaltered rock or a rock with microbes? Uh, let's see what we got. Look up for uh, one for Val, are we? I would say one for Val, yeah. It's sort of angular. Yeah. Like Maybe near this. near to a outcrop if they're or larger. Oh, she's down the lounge. Nice. Likely angular victims in here, you think? Yeah, those look pretty good. Right, those, these two right there. Can't tell the size, really. They're pretty big. They seem pretty grande. But there's, I don't know, it's a lot of rebel -y. I don't know if you want to... Go for a Let's go for a smaller one. Then yeah, there's some pretty good-looking uh, pillow, frag pillow fragments uh, in this area. Awesome. Any one in particular you like? Point uh, to one, Paul. I love that one. Is this a good one, Val? They can't see the telestrator uh, Oh, hang on. I'm just I, I uh, can see where the, I can manually see the pointing. Is. Um, yeah, that looks like a good size. It'll fit on the rock saw. Poke it with your, uh, touch it with your uh, fingers. And she'll that one? Is it dislodged? No. Looks like it's fixed. Ah. The one to the left of it. Looks like it was would be loose, yeah. Oh, one of the bigger ones, maybe. Mm. Oh. oh, there you go. Yeah. The original one's loose. Yeah. That's the one that Dwight pointed out there. That no, looks good. Oh. You're pushing me away. Sorry. <laughs> nice one. Very nice. Two for one. Yeah. Victory roll with the coral in the background. Starboard box, I'm thinking, right? Um, starboard box B is good. Sure. Yeah. Is that uh, good on the zoom? Um, not yet. All right, you're good. She's good. Oh, okay. Yeah, that looks good. Thank you. Awesome. Starboard box B. B. Yes. B. Uh, zoom in there if you want, Jeff, while he's still in the rock. Another little hidden. Another one of those cried ones that you collected yeah. earlier. Push, push right in if you want. Purple to white gradient. Yeah. Very good with the little pictures. You want the salvo? Uh, the little pictures make it nice and challenging, but I can hit the salvo. It's just the button. Like, uh, that one. So our tentative ID on this ah. crinoid is Sathiometra. Why does it do that? Genus. Sorry. <laughs> the rock was bigger than it looked it. <laughs> it barely fit. Fit right nice in there. One. <laughs> nice job. I felt confident about that one. Yeah. <laughs> Basketball shot. <laughs> totally. Nice.
Hall Steph Curry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Steph Curry uses the uh, the rim so much. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of a dunk. <laughs> Steph can dunk a little. Yeah. Every once in a blue moon. I hope he's watching right now. <laughs> <laughs> He'd be glad to know I said that. Okay, Jeff, thanks. And I think we're good for another 20. Bridge, this is Nav. We uh, don't need a Niskin here, right? I don't think so. Great. Can we please move 20 meters at bearing 353, three, please? Yeah, thank you. I'm staying on with you. digital stills camera but no takers. <laughs> the current's kind of changed since we've uh, come over the hill. current change, Dan? It seems like it's now going to the west. But oh, pulling you to the stern, isn't it? Yeah, well, the tether's not blowing off hard. Yeah, that's true. Rest valve. Oops. Still in pretty high density bamboo coral here. Yep. And yeah, push, looks like seen a little a more there, live yeah. stuff than before. Looking at a Walteria glass sponge here. What's the 
growth rate on the corals down here? Do you know? Uh, it varies by group. Um, and you can, some corals, you can kind of age them kind of like trees with Good growth Good for another rates. 20. Um, yeah. I always say a general rule of thumb is they, they grow kind of like your fingernails. Hmm. That sort Interesting. of speed. Yeah. Imagine some of these older corals are, or some of these bigger corals are very, very old. Well, we are just uh, starting a shift change over here a little bit before uh, midnight HST. So you'll start hearing a few different voices on at this point, including myself. Uh, so this is, uh, this is Val Finlayson again. Um, probably heard me during starts of the last couple of dives. Um, and this is our first uh, graveyard shift that we're uh, that my uh, uh, team is going to be uh, running. So a little opposite of what we've been, uh, of the schedule we've been running up to this point. So um, you may hear uh, some of the front row go silent for a few minutes as uh, folks start to change over, as, and then uh, the back row will be in and out as well. Salam alaikum. Oh, hello. Good evening or good morning. Yeah, we start again. in the DSC, <laughs> how tall it is. <laughs> That's wild. So shall we keep moving? Uh, no, let's hold or it. do you want to hold uh, for the watch change? We'll, yeah, we'll hold it for a while. Okay. Change. We've been doing uh, 20 meter steps. Yep. Okay. But uh, yeah, dealer's choice there. I might later on do a 
little bit longer one so we can have a good momentum to push the ship. Yeah, the <coughs> we were doing short steps because it was really steep. So, and I think you guys, but well, uh, we're pretty much okay. near the top now. When, Almost, when, yeah. when we're going up the hill, we have, it was, uh, True. it was going too fast for the, we couldn't, ooh, there's a cool rock. There's a handover rock right there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> This ROV will uh, do what it's supposed to do. And twink, twink. Uh, got a bunch of samples. Um, we saw a, uh, a pretty cool one of those angler fish. Oh, um, yeah, well, that's pretty cool. And it did this kind of crazy yawn with its mouth, where its mouth like extended and stretched out. So that was pretty fun. Total alien. I'm uh. <laughs> okay. I'm All right. Out. Gonna Thanks. sign out. Bye, everyone. Testing, 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 okay. All right, test, test, back row, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Yep. I cannot hear you guys. Yes, we can. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's hit waypoint three, and then uh, once we get a little bit above that where things flatten out, um, that would be a good place to uh, pull a Niskin for eDNA. Roger that. Thanks. Can we get Just a look at some of the corals on this rock over here? Too? Whenever you're ready, uh, we'll sure start thing. moving towards zero six zero. Roger that. We're going to take a quick look at this rock. I'm just going to get myself set up here real quick. Oh, get up. Uh, Nice, we have an opportunistic sample. Ah. It'll probably get washed off. We have a porch coral. Porch coral. Porch coral. We tried picking <laughs> it up. It didn't get too far. <laughs> That's okay. 
We had a few uh, porch rocks uh, last night, so porch we had rock. to get bonuses. Let's take a look. Oops, sorry. Is the one on the right a primnoid? I believe so, and I think the one on the bottom left is a primnoid too. Also, yeah. Actually, I'm not sure that's about the, the one, one on the that right. looks. Oh, about the one on the right? Yeah. That's we got Ryan in here tonight. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Hey. Justin not feeling 100%. Reg. Is the bottom left one Norella? Or is that like, yeah, It maybe. looks like it's me. Um, and then this one on the right is uh, interesting. I don't know if we've seen that yet. It looks a little different than the hemichorallium. Hey, Rhett, would you mind uh, reducing the iris a little, please? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't look as chunky as Paragorgia, though. I mean. No. We could maybe zoom. Let me get a little bit of a better shot. Uh, lower right, is that correct? Yeah, this big white one on the right. Roger that. All right, go ahead and push on in there a bit, please. Thank you. Definitely looks primnoity, right? Yeah. Is it? Like, I don't know, it doesn't look the same as these Calyptrophora, but... No. Something different. No, yeah, different branching pattern. Uh, oh, sorry, I can't really hear you there, Rit, but um, do you guys want a tighter shot? Yeah, if we could get a full zoom on this. Maybe. All right, let me see if I can get you really steady here. Or steadier. can't hear you, Rhett. Yeah, sorry. Are you on mute? I don't hear you at all. I can only hear you. Yeah, I don't line. hear you either, right there, please, Rhett. And then I'll uh, get set up for a tight shot. Thank you. How about now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Welcome uh, to the party. All right. <laughs> cool shot in the sexton. Yeah, did you see me pull that up? Well, it's on yeah. the screen here, yeah. Oh, you can see it, yeah. Not bad. We're going to get a really in intimate shot with these guys pretty soon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead and push on in there, please. Sorry for the waving head. Is that um, star pathies above the orange right here? Yeah, it looks like it. A little cup coral, Munidopsis, squat lobster hanging mm -hmm. out. Yeah, that's a really nice shot. Thank you. Yeah. The other pink stuff does look like hemicrallium now. The other pink. You can come a little white there, left. please. To the left. The one on the rock. Can you come a little more wide, please. Anything else you guys want to see here? I think that was it. Thanks. Sure thing. Pretty. Very cool rock. That rock yeah. has some serious flare going. Awesome rock. I like that flare. Yeah. Love the Quick rock gauge with check. Flare. Super quick. Quick. For those of you just joining us, we're about six hours into a 16-hour dive on unnamed East Seamount in the Liliuokalani Ridge. All right, Suleiman, what's Shall the we? what's the game plan? Yeah. So. Northeast. Yep. yep. Zero six. Sure. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, I think we'll proceed on 060. Roger that. 060. 060. Roger, roger. 
will move in 50 meter steps. However, I uh, will make a point two uh, knots of a speed. Sounds great. Thank you. Praise. This is Nav. Uh, can we make a move uh, bearing zero six zero, 50 meters, uh, speed zero point two knot. Affirmative. C. <laughs> We have a question as to whether any one of us has seen whales or sharks in this part of the ocean this week. Mm. Oh, this week. Oh, <coughs> change the question. I think a yeah. shark was seen on one of the watches. Yeah, we yeah. did oh, see really? a chimera. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen any whales, no. And if we were, well, I guess we're outside the monument right now, but if we were to be in the monument and see whales, uh, we would have to recover the vehicles. I'm trying to give them their space. Yeah, I'm not sure about the migration patterns of whales, but generally um, we see them coming past the Hawaiian Islands in uh, roughly January, February every year. So chances are they may be um, somewhere else at the moment. I'm not sure what their migration patterns look like. I don't know. What's that big white thing on the ground? Oh, just Is going that off just dead, screen? dead coral? I yeah. think so. The one at the bottom? It looks yeah. so like... Blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't look like a happy coral, that. <laughs> it's a very unhappy thing. Yeah, even the ones that are still alive, we've been seeing a lot that are like yeah. sort of half, half stripped. And that's probably what I'm going to look like by the end of this... Uh, <laughs> 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 I got What's very your real back there. Dead <laughs> corals. <laughs> Necrotic corals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys ID'd that sponge that we, we've seen a couple of the smaller euplectelids? Not the smaller ones, no. I just have it at euplectelid. Yeah, okay. So what was that sponge you saw that was last collected that was like, what Fiona was trying to describe to me, Ra like smaller, rounder, brown? Yeah, we thought it was a tunicate at first. Okay. And then we collected it and it was very non-tunicate. Not a tunicate, yeah. okay. Um, looked a little uh, spongy. Kind of looked like a small geoded sponge. Oh, okay, like okay. sort of what we collected the other day. Kind of like a ball sponge. Okay. Yeah. This is this a is sponge on a sponge? That's sponge on sponge. On sponge? Yeah, we, co we collected some of this right, bottom that sponge at the beginning of the dive too. This is a strange, yeah, strange sight. So those are two different species of sponge, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very just. You're gonna do a partial zoom, please. Is one of them? Is that a like the left one a stalked like a like bolosoma type thing like growing next to it, maybe really close? I can't trace the stalk down. Yeah, if it has one. Maybe it's behind. I don't know. It's floating. I don't know. Yeah, that's strange. The stalk might could go through. Yeah. The bottom mm. one. Yeah, like, I'm not, it doesn't look really like the stalk's on the outside. Interesting. Strange.
Cool. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. You guys want to see any more of this, or should I come away? We're good. I think All we're right. good. Go ahead and come away, please. Oh, this shag-looking coral here. We got a little bit of time. Christ, the gorge it. Oh. <laughs> it's a nicer name. <laughs> the Christ, you so gorgeous coral. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's <laughs> shy, you know. <laughs> Go to push on in there, but please. That's great. Cool. Twinkly. Yeah. All right, pull wide, please. We haven't collected any collected any Christ gorgeous, but I always like seeing their their like gold skeletons. Yeah, there was one on the last dive we should have collected in mm. hindsight, but it was what was different. what did it look like? It was like a branching Christ mm. Oh. You guys. A brand, a branch in Christ of oh, Origin. I yeah, was no, no, just no. commenting on my O is based on that. <laughs> That's a weird one too. What we have in the center screen? There? Yeah, bottom left sponge. Oh, the bottom yeah, left sponge. Yeah, it has that kind of yellowish. I think that part's sort of dying, but okay. the just the general structure, like that tubular. Go ahead and push on in, please. Sort of. Right. Is interesting. Are there any ferrea that look like that? I was gonna say it's probably a ferrea day. Have we seen one of those yet? No. This well, doesn't look I, familiar. Not on our watches. Yeah, not on our watch, watches. Watches for sure. It looks, yeah, like ferrea. Or Freddy, that family. You want porch light on? Yeah, let's do that. Raj. Is that better for you, video? It is. Yeah, yeah. it's a little easier to uh, to handle the iris with it. Yeah, Raj. A little flatter lighting. Sure. Huh. All right, pull wide there, please. Thank you. I have a question about whether sponges have been found to have any medicinal properties. Oh, it looks sort of like the Oka erecta that we were seeing the other day. Not oh, totally, yeah. but... It does look similar. Um, yeah, that's an active field of research, uh, actually, is um, trying to develop novel chemical compounds out of sponges, because um, they have a lot of weird chemistry going on within them. So a lot of people are trying to harness the power of the sponge. Oh, power of the sponge. Now that's a cool saying, power, power of the sponge. Power of the sponge, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They also have interesting microbial communities sometimes, too. Yeah. Uh, let me check. <laughs> it could go quite a bit further. Yeah. Oh, what are we coming up on? Another I see nice more Chrysogorgia on yeah. this, a bunch of other things. Look at you with that bio-ID, Val. <laughs> told you so I'd pick some of those. You yeah. are. Anthemastus mushroom, including okay. the other, I, I guess, I will make another move only, um, say, the 20 one meters. starts with a T. Treasure. But it will be on bearing uh, 030. 030, Reg. Yep. Just to get you up. Heteropulpus T2. I can't remember. <laughs> Bridge, this is Nav. Can we have a uh, move on bearing 030, 20 meters? Yes, please. Cross here. It's like a whole rock party over here. Rock party. <laughs> it's a benthic version of a block party, is it? <laughs> Very yes. much so. It is now. <laughs> oh. 
I'm sorry, we're gonna get a lot of these crappy jokes for me tonight. No, this <laughs> is good. I am this here good. for it. <laughs> <laughs> They're angular. Tacky notice. That's it. There are lots of oh, angular really? ones. Yeah, this has been a pretty good de debris field up this slope for a while. Yeah. Suleiman, would you mind squaring up on the DVL screen when you get a moment? Thank you. No problem. So I saw on the board it said that we're uh, rock samples uh, no sh to be 15 centimeters. Is that for all rock samples for like both you, uh, Val, you and Beth? Um, preferably, yeah. Okay. Um, we're we're running into issues where <laughs> the, big, the, the big chonkers. <laughs> <laughs> they they don't. I like. I, I figured out how to weigh them. Finally, got got that uh, oh, yeah? sorted. Oh, yeah. Um, but some but. The two biggest ones sitting in the lab right now um, are, they won't fit on the rock saw yeah. that we have on board, so. <laughs> oh, so it is not a, we have been collecting rocks that are too small. It is a, we have been collecting rocks that are too big problem. That makes sense. A little bit, yeah. Raj, raj, raj. And yeah, um, our biggest sample bags don't fit either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So it's like a 15 centimeter maximum. Um. That's kind of the ideal range. If it if it goes a little beyond that, um, okay, that's that's okay. Because I, I was mean, thinking it was a fifteen centimeter minimum. Oh, I thought maybe you I just wanted bad Larrys. Yeah, I had no idea. Okay, okay. I'll Larry's? clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the ones that came up uh, on yesterday's dive, uh, I got a weight on it this morning, and it's about. Um, 38 pounds. <laughs> oh my gosh, the <laughs> shipping costs are going my to be astronomical. My little sister weighs 38 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Walteria. It is a beautiful sample though. It's just, it's just a chonker. <laughs> For practicality's sake. <laughs> okay. And yes, chonker is a technical term. There is totally a brazingid or something eating that part of that coral now. Oh, totally, the red yeah, one? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Did we want to get a look at that? Sea star eating one of the ones oh, before uh, that too. It's just to your port, uh, starboard side. Yeah. Do you guys mind if I keep going? Keep just go, go for sure. it. Sure. Yeah. No, we've seen a lot of that. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. A lot of predation. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll just get a little bit out so that I have more time in the, as Kylie says, the penny bank. Could we like take a look here? Penny's in the possible? zoom bank. Yeah. That's interesting. So we've suddenly come across a lot there, more please. dead or dying corals here. Yeah. I can go a little wider if you want. Oh no, that's cool. You're okay. Oh. That's fine, thank you. Small. I thought it was something else encrusting on this. Ah, uh, Raj. Okay, full wide, please. When you say encrusting, what does that mean? Or just overgrowing the dead skeleton. They said oh. I thought it was like a stoloniferous octocoral. Roger. Um, it's just in-house right now. I could put it on sat feed three, though. Sure thing. So it looks like this, wow, this guy's pretty barren, isn't it? The skeleton here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that crinoid doesn't consume, does it? No, it's just trying to get a good vantage point up top. Ah, uh, yes, taking in the views. <laughs> <laughs> no, little crinoid, don't listen to the news. The news is not fun right now. Mm, the news that they're going to get collected? <laughs> <laughs> How does a crinoid get its news? You should do a research paper on it. <laughs> <laughs> it probably catches the drift. Oh, 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 oh snap. Oh. <laughs> okay. So it's been you writing in all the jokes? <laughs> <laughs> that is a KPOG. <laughs> 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 Sorry. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> Another crime.
crinoid there. Yeah, no, that's a big one. A lot of those ones with that sort of purple that to white gradient. Wasn't there a crinoid earlier. that was on Kelly's? Yeah, we collected it oh, earlier. Oh, you did? Oh, you did, okay. Oh, sweet. Go ahead and push out in there, that's, please. That's the one, though? I, sw I was like, yeah, I recognize that purple great, one. thank you. Oh, yeah. Xenometridy. Pull away, please. Square up my camera. So, hold position here. Uh, I think you need to take the skin over here somewhere. Um, or would you like to start going north and then stop? I mean, it looks like pretty, I, it's hard to tell what we're around right here. It I looks like it's almost less dense than before. Yeah, I vote for seeing what's north of here. Yeah. Yeah. So keep moving or stop? Let's keep moving. So I'll keep moving towards north if you are looking at the high back. Sounds good. So I'll yep. move to north, yeah. Looks good. Okay. So we'll, uh, next step will be to north. Roger that. Zero, zero, zero. Roger. Roger. Bridge, this is nav. Can we make a move uh, north, zero, zero, zero? 50 meters. What What's that? that? Fishy. Fish. Yeah. Yes. We haven't seen any what? like that yet. No, it's the new one. It's reveal yourself. Yeah. Hiding yeah. Behind. It's like a shadow. It really is. Peter Pan, come here. <laughs> <laughs> Get out from under there. There we go. It looks file fishy. Ooh. It's Go ahead so and push weird. under there, please. <laughs> it's a void That's fish. Great. Oh, wait, no, it looks very different than I thought. I it is a. Uh, I'm in love. I think we saw one of these. <laughs> what are those called again? Kylie, you want to turn off the lasers? Here? Yeah, yeah. Turn off the lasers, Raj. Nice. Peek it. Lasers off. <laughs> Ryan and I are over. like, we are not vertebrate biologists. <laughs> this is like, okay, so it's like kind of a full moon, and this is kind of like a black cat, but like deep sea. Mm. Yup, it's a full moon. Okay, what's it all mean? For sure. I don't know. I think it's a good omen. Okay, I like the good omen thing. Always looking for good omens down here. That is cool. cool. I've never seen something so pigmented dark like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. right. That's cool. With black eyes. All right. Beautiful. See you, Mr. Eyes. Fishy. Pull away, please. Definitely, yeah. Blowing in the breeze. Predator. Yes. So we are diving currently with two ROVs, Hercules and Atalanta. Uh, Hercules is the view you'll see moving along the bottom, and Atalanta's view is uh, above Hercules. You can see in the other monitor or on the other screen. Um, we are at a depth of 2,319 meters at a Balmy temperature of 1.8 degrees Celsius. Ooh. <laughs> sounds like a beach day. It sounds like a beach day. <laughs> I don't want to go to that beach. No way. <laughs> I just took a sip out of my mug, thinking, forgetting that I had put hot tea into it. Oh, no. And it was so hot. No, you guys. No. What kind of, are you using the, yeah, it's the Nautilus cup? I was yeah, like, yeah, hot forever cup. Yeah, hot forever. <laughs> In perpetuity. This is interesting. Oh, one of our scientists ashore says that that's uh, the first time uh, they've seen this fish in over 12 expeditions. Wow. Mm. Is that the butt of a chana <laughs> No, <laughs> it looks like it's Go on, on it's <laughs> growing <laughs> on the... Oh, it's like al no it's not. it's an anemone. anemone it's oh, an anemone okay. it's, yeah. oh cool we saw one that like the stalk of it was completely going down a branch wow. of dead really? bamboo and it looked really weird so it's just closed up around that branch yeah it looks, looks like, like it, it. Huh. so its mouth is this is how they sleep or like what is it <laughs> what is it what does it indicate when it is Pull closed it, do we know not feeding 
not feeding. Roger. Roger. So okay. Its mouth is somewhere in that mess of tentacles there. <laughs> not feeding when when tentacles are closed. Roger. <laughs> A full Roger. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to learn. <laughs> this is my learning Roger. <laughs> I'm like noted. Like put Good. that in my brain and file that for later. <laughs> Some of these dead bamboo are so big. So big. And yeah. yeah. Well, this is a big mama. Yeah. Oh. It is curious how they do have a lot of dead within the colony. Right. And living sections still, too. It's yeah. It's to look like a total forest over here. For sure. And there's some living ones that are similar size, so it's, it doesn't seem like everything yeah. died at once. Yeah. I was when looking at this earlier from downstairs. I was chatting with Rhett. I was like, I don't know. You know, could there be you want to go ahead and push on in a bit, viruses or pathogens of some kind that affect deep sea coral that aren't well cataloged? Yeah, well, that's a good for sure. Good theory. That's one of the only things we didn't. We thought about everything besides <laughs> that. Maybe. So, like oh, for example, cool with, the with this one where it has a couple of. Uh, uh, not so good looking branches is that mm. predation or is that something else well that's what we're trying to figure out that's oh, what we're okay. saying right okay. now we have okay. no idea yeah that was very measured val those not so good looking branches <laughs> i'm being <laughs> you know all those ugly ones yeah, that are lovely. clearly dead <laughs> <laughs> i noticed your diplomacy <laughs> the it's way cool to see the tissue layer like the right yeah the way i'm seeing them it seems like a lot of them are dying from the bottom up right. so it looks not i mean I don't okay. know, but it doesn't look like predation to me necessarily. It just looks like they're like going necrotic. Full eye, please. Gotcha. What would predation look like compared to this? Uh, a um, really fat starfish. Yeah, we'll see it for <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. When you got the starfish perched, but I, I didn't r didn't know if they started at the bottom and climbed their way up, or if they ended up starting somewhere else and working in other directions. It's a very good work ethic. I guess it would make sense to start <laughs> from the bottom, right? But they would like take a section and I don't yeah. know. Yeah, we got some more sediment here. Is that a fissure? No, I'm still looking for a good place to uh, pull a Niskin. I haven't for quite e seen one yet. Yeah, for eDNA. Uh, I mean, we could do one around here. We have a lots free, so we could totally do a Niskin here in this Dead bamboo situation. <laughs> <laughs> so you make a very compelling case. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's interesting, right? And, and so in that, you could potentially capture if there were some kind of uh, predators. virus of some sort. Oh, virus, you know, you Raj. <laughs> that would be in that sample as well. I mean, yeah, we could get into the thick of, of this, like a meter off bottom. Or, or get actually, I don't know, like get into the... Yeah, I don't know. I couldn't think it's of a, a dead word. It's a thicket of corals. Into the thicket <laughs> of it. Yeah, I think this might be a good place to, to pull uh, one. Why okay. not, you know? Yeah. All right. See some whip bamboos down there, too, which we haven't seen much of today. Oh, okay. Yeah. Would you like me to get the arm out? Yes, please, ma'am. Roger. I should be. questions coming that in about what I want. corals dying. Um, we we are clearly not, not the crowd to ask. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Go ahead, Christopher. We've just been talking about how we're not sure why they're dying. We have some possible ideas. But um, a question is, does a coral die all at once oh. or incrementally? <laughs> mm. These look like they're dying incrementally to me. Um, OK. But you know, you see some of them knocked over as well. So um, that, could, that might take you out a little quicker. Would you mind doing Mon right and Herc at the bottom, Mon right? Uh, sorry, right over there. M Mon right. Right below where your finger is right now. It says Mon right. Sorry, I got it. A coral right. is a cool. colony right. of individuals, so. Do you want bubble or are you good polyp. without bubble? I think I'm good without bubble. Um, I'll Raj, use the HG. Jess, I don't know if you can readjust, but if it would be possible to get a little closer down. Roger that. Be awesome. Stand by one second, Kylie. Roger, I'll halt. All right, do, do, do. I don't want to land on top of a coral. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, I am currently 1.8 Yeah, that's great. Off. All right, go ahead, Kylie. I got eyes on Niskins. 
Roger. Um, and we have so far taken Niskin one, so you'll want to go for two. Reg. And popped. Roger. And that was about two meters of altitude. That's Perfect. okay there, Lila. Wow, that guy's really on for the ride there. What is this is a really good time for my R key to start jamming up on the keyboard. Oh no. <laughs> it's it's those awful keyboards. From the uh you have a Mac oh you yeah, have the before they read twenty seventeen the butterfly. Model. Mm. Yeah, the one with the screen that burns into and the logic board issues. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've, you know I've the one. I accidentally put the um, claw on the porch. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, Raj. Oh, oh we have a possible salt ID. Uh, <laughs> Evil says <laughs> that, the, uh, that the void fish might be a uh, Moridae antimora. Okay. Thanks. Um, oh, oh, yeah, that looks a lot like an emerald. Oh, is there another one down Including there? Including the eyes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure enough. Right in the, Right on time. And there's a sea star predating on a bamboo coral down there. So, yep. Oh, lots yeah. of interesting things to see over here. That is a big fish. It is a big fish. Probably half a meter long, maybe. Oh, yeah. We well, could probably square it up here with the eyes. Yeah, yeah. Good estimate. Yeah, interesting. So it's 10 centimeters for a section of the tail. It's probably like 70 centimeters long. Yeah. Maybe. That is a big fish. Video, can you push in on Atalanta? Sure. Thank you. You can hold there. So, man, would you mind squaring up on the DBL sure. again, please? Thank you. We had a question about when black corals die, does the skeleton look all black? It does, yeah. But that's uh, typically what they look like. They have a sort of so proteinaceous skeleton moving? that's pretty characteristic of that okay, group Okay, it could be 320. 320? Okay. Yep. 320. Back row, you don't want anything from this waypoint, right? We can just keep going. Um, I think we're good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once we get sure. further up the ridge, I'll be on the lookout for some rock samples. Okay. We'll be heading towards... Uh, we point four. Bridge, this is nav. Hey, can we get the ship mo on move uh, bearing three two zero fifty meters? Yes, please. We have a question coming in about coral polyps. If a coral is a colony of individuals, how do the individual polyps form the base and attach to the rock? Is the main stalk a single coordinated organism and the arms have the individual polyps? How does that work? Yeah, so um, they pretty much nailed it. it <laughs> it's really, <laughs> they are a colonial organism. The um, individual that starts the colony basically settles and, and builds the base secretes the base um, and it's the same material that they use to build the rest of the skeleton which is secreted by individual polyps as you work your way up the branches are all those polyps genetically identical yes same dna is it is it easy to explain how they replicate um they can replicate sexually or asexually. Okay. Um, yeah. I forgot biology. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so we're talking about how, uh, you know, there has to be an original one that yep. s 
starts it. Um, how do they disperse? Okay. They disperse in the water column. Um, oh, so you want it by the USB, right? Or by the cursor? Yeah. Okay. You ready for it? Oh. You reset dead wreck so you don't have cumulative Does error. it look good now? You are facing this way. Yes, I think it looks good. Yep. So it's kind of cool again. So you can see there are all, all these corals oriented into like orthogonal to the flow. So you can see that we're actually kind of going along with the flow right now. I have no, I have my no hands on the stick again. And so we're getting pushed by the current and it's the same way that's like orthogonal to the way that these corals are growing. Cool. Nice. It's pretty awesome. Cool observation. That's a good shot. Nature. Maximizes their cross section to the current. Yeah. Yeah. Um, going off of that question Rhett, that Rhett was asking uh, Ryan, because I don't know a ton about this with deep sea coral, but like, <clears throat> you know, what are, I know there might be settlement cues, like Beth is thinking, thinking even settlement cues for microbes that help uh, a a polyp or help a, what is, what is, what is the, the zooplankton version of a of coral called? Um, oh my gosh. Uh, I feel like this I is know, should be on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> yeah, me too. But anyway, for a juvenile coral to, I guess not yet juvenile, but a, a coral to settle. Um, okay. But are there other cues? Bless you. Like, can they sense? I mean, there's no light cues here. Is that a green thing? Probably not. Magnetotaxis. Like, like, what are there? Are there? There's probably. Um, like a whole suite of physiochemical things right. that they're sensing about the water, things like temperature, um, perhaps flow of some, yeah, no, yeah, flow for sure. Um, do a partial based on where we there, find please? them, right, in really high flow areas. Right, that's great. Um, survivor bias too, I guess. Like maybe they settle in multiple places and only the ones right. in the right spots survive. No, nope, I don't think that's one of those uh, mm. green things. No, uh, it's a not sure. different thing. Which is a very technical term. Different crusty <laughs> thing. But I knew what you the meant. thing that we have no idea what it is. Yeah, the one that we tried to sample yesterday. Yeah, that was really stuck on that rock. Did you guys get anything in that jar? We got a teeny bit. Like, Ryan and I were picking out, like, little itty bits that we put into a vial in ethanol. So huh. if someone wanted to sequence it genetically, there's enough material to know what it is. Huh. Nice. Or is related to, you know. But Full wide, please. Uh, we might have to do another reset there, actually. So the one looks like it's drifted the position again. Do another reset? Yeah, please. It looks like my, because my USB is about here, I think. Over here? Yeah, probably here-ish. Okay, let's do it by the cursors. Planula? Sure thing. Planula. There we go. <laughs> I was like, we should know this. <laughs> I just looked it up to double check. I know, I was about to Google, and I was like, no, 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 I know this. Okay. Is that good? It hurt me to yeah, know let's that. Yeah, let's see if it, let's see if that one works. Okay. I kept thinking trochophore, which is other groups. Mollusks. But the planula is a free-swimming or free-floating organism until after days or weeks it'll drop down to the ocean floor and find a place to settle and attach to a rock. Kind of sounds like the grad school experience. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of drift around a lot and eventually you just want to look for a place where you can take put some roots down. Yeah. <laughs> question about how many coral species, different species, are found inside the monument. Oh my gosh. Species? That's a really good question, so and we're probably expanding that number yeah, with every dive speak. here. <laughs> I mean, we have on our, on our, in, in our, like, ID guides, there are hundreds of, of species, probably.
Yeah, really diverse. Yeah, and a lot of them are not here. identified to species. We have a lot of like genus identifications, unknown, wow. undefined right. species for even what's in the ID guide. So yeah, and a lot of the things we're seeing are probably cryptic species exactly. too. And we're just looking at it. You couldn't tell if it was a different species or not, but maybe was genetically different enough from something that looks pretty similar to it to be its own species. Yeah, I'm just amazed at just the encyclopedic knowledge of all of the bio folks sitting on either side of me right now. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's because I, I look at this and I, I can tell you if it's a coral mostly or a sponge mostly. <laughs> Or something else, and I'm just like, I know what's going on with the rocks, but <laughs> how, how do you how do you guys just pull these names out of out of everywhere? I, I can't <laughs> I can't I can't keep track of names to save my life. <laughs> but a you know a lot of things. Animals. Yeah. I feel like you like when you describe what you see on the inside of a rock. When you describe like, you know, they're not you don't say olive but that's what comes to mind first. You describe every mineral, and I'm like, yeah, no. I learned that once and I forgot it all. So. <laughs> you can tell me the history of a rock by looking at the outside of it and that yeah. <laughs> blows my mind. <laughs> I guess I guess it speaks to uh, where we focused our interests yeah, sure. too. Totally. Right. Wow, well, we've got a question that's right up your alley on this one. If you use radioisotope decay to age rock samples, wouldn't those radioisotopes be decaying whilst in the magma prior to eruption, not formed as part of the eruption process, or are they? Um, for the uh, for the isotopes that we are interested in using to help um, identify Roger. the source of these rocks, yeah. Um, <laughs> Oops. And that's that's really handy because. Uh, uh, the melting process, uh, the, the processes that uh, generate these lavas uh, from their mantle sources, um, it doesn't change those isotope ratios uh, just by the process of melting. It's it's just uh, what we're seeing with those uh, changes in isotope ratios and some of those distinct uh, signals that we see. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, decay that's Can I happening. Do a partial zoom here, please. Uh, that's decay that's happening all the time. That's great. And uh, it generally does uh, record a little wide, please. Uh, record the composition isotopically of the uh, the source rock that it came from. There are certain scenarios where other um, other radioisotope uh, systems and things like uh, you know more complex decay chains like uranium or thorium uh, can be disrupted and basically put out of equilibrium. Uh, but that's um, that's generally a shorter oh, time wide, scale, so we wouldn't be able to really do a whole lot. Um, with like U-series behavior, for example, in rocks this old. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that you want to do if, if you're interested in um, what that might tell you um, on really fresh lavas. That's a really bright red crinoid. Yeah, it looks then like Then there are even some other isotope systems that are not uh, I will wait for you until you come closer, then I will make the move, or shall I make the move right now? You like can go ahead and make the move. I'm I'm out ahead here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there there so are. So it will be. Uh, oops, excuse me. Three two five. Three two five, Raj. Three two five. Raj, this is Nav. Can you do a partial zoom here, please? Let's get there. Uh, can we make a move bearing three two five fifty meters? Is it a crime? It's All a right, go ahead and push on like in a bit a more, please. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Brzezing you. Brzezing. It did look like a crime at first. Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Huh. Nice star, or feather, or flower, yeah. full line, please. Star. Whoa. <laughs> you know, wh whatever that is. <laughs> <All of the above. laughs> Remix. <laughs> nice organism. <laughs> nice creature, yeah. Look at this thing. Look at that thing. Look how nice it is. <laughs> Seems very oh, man, alive. You guys, 12 to 4 is so much more fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was lovely. <laughs> Well, that's where we're at tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us on 12 to 4. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Got to go. All right, let's pull away now. <laughs> pull away. <laughs> Overnight ship science on Nautilus. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ryan, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to be here. This is fun. We have a good time. Oh, yeah. And here's a question that bridges the biology geology Ooh. divide. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. If you were a coral, mm -hmm. what would your ideal rock be <laughs> to attach to? Uh, one with less sediment on it. That's going to be my answer. <laughs> um, one that is that puts you higher up. So when we were seeing these big like pinnacles that were covered in larger corals, uh, that's yeah, it's nicer to be further away from like the bottom boundary layer where where friction stops the flow from being as fast. Um, what else, Ryan? Sometimes like an overhanging rock is a nice place for oh, a coral yeah. to be. Oh, like walls will have vertical them a lot. walls. Yeah, or or a good overhang is pretty nice. And that keeps the sediment off, nice and falling off. I was thinking the Hope Diamond wouldn't be a bad thing to attach to. Yeah, <laughs> that you know could be good. A diamond. Nice. But what if someone steals the diamond? <laughs> you're on it. You're stuck Deep there. Sea. <laughs> it is chocolate o'clock here in the van. Chocolate o'clock. I've never heard of a deep sea diamond heist. <laughs> <laughs> this oh, could be a thing for, for Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> Why haven't they thought of that? What, what did Wait. you call it? Oceans what? <laughs> Get on SPL and tell us your oh, your KPOG. Ah, oh, sorry. I was trying to say. Oh, <laughs> I don't even remember the setup anymore. What well, I was it's, gonna. It's the name of a, a deep sea oh, diamond heist. Oh, like diamond heist, right? And I was gonna say oceans. Oceans. Like oceans. Oceans. Oh, oceans. Oceans. <laughs> oceans. <laughs> oceans negative twenty five hundred. Oceans nineteen eighteen. No, no, no. Oceans NA one three eight. Yes, 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 yes. That's the one. <laughs> Is James Cameron going to direct this one? Because he did that with Titanic. <laughs> Ocean's 11,000 meters. Yes. Oh. Wow. Oh, that's very wow. nice. <laughs> Ocean's 20,000 leagues under the sea. <laughs> Wait, but I just heard something that was like from a TV show. So obviously it's real. Um, but <laughs> no, it is. It is. It, in this case, actually, it is. It it's kind of like watching TV. it on Jeopardy, but it's not. Okay, c continue. Um, but like, <laughs> thank you. Um, how deep did Captain Nemo's Nautilus go? How did it go? How far? How deep? Oh. How deep? Oh, we were talking about this the other day. The 20,000 leagues doesn't, that's question? like that horizontal question? distance. That's, that's that correct. That is the horizontal distance of what it what it did. I don't know how deep it went. 20,000 leagues under the sea vertically is like in the mantle somewhere, right? Yeah. But also the 20,000 leagues right. was the horizontal right. distance. Right. And the, the answer, according to a show I watch called Quite Interesting, is, um, is QI. Uh, is um, It was, oh, Jessica, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> I played her the clip. Um, it was four leagues, which is like <laughs> a l sixteen thousand. Sounds less impressive. I know. <laughs> that doesn't sell very many books. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but according to like league math, um, that equals like sixteen thousand meters, which is like deeper, deep, 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 big deep. Very deep. Yeah, you're like very, the very mantle at this point. Deeper than the deepest. Still, still incredible. I didn't read that book. Yeah, you but gotta, I did watch you gotta, show. you gotta say it in inches. You know, well, centimeters. <laughs> what, you know, what, what is that? Did in they go in centimeters? That's what what, what is that in bananas? Yeah. <laughs> what is that How in bananas? How many grains? ice cream scoops does it take? <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't know. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> On a really deep, large Sunday, really tall Sunday. <laughs> we're sad. We're sad about the lack of sun. <laughs> yes, I was told this was going to happen. Okay, Belle. <laughs> you were lied to. <laughs> you we were all you lied, lied to. Lied to. <laughs> <laughs> but if you could have had ice cream, what flavor would you have wanted? Uh, no, this is no. a cruel game. This is what are we doing here? <laughs> Don't do this to us. <laughs> we're fantasizing. <laughs> it would have been uh, tasty. I want. I want I want a green tea shaved ice right now. I ate such a good Ooh. one before oh, coming mochi out. Mochi ice cream so is so good. good. I want cherry Garcia Ben and Jerry's. Oh, that's pretty good. I All love Ben and cherry Jerry's. Garcia. <laughs> I'm a fan of fish food. Fish food. Ooh, yeah. Fish food is fish good too. Good. Kind of a sucker for marshmallow and caramel and ice cream. Tin Ooh. roof sundae. 
What's that? I don't know what that means. It's marshmallow and caramel and chocolate and ice cream. Uh, it's right. very I'm here good. for it. Oh, I didn't know that. That sounds amazing. Okay, what do we got? We got some living bamboo. Oh, wait, coral. we got to do science, right? Chrysa gorgeous. Yes, science first. <laughs> <laughs> Same stuff as before, and that weird from know it again. <laughs> Same <laughs> stuff <laughs> as before. <laughs> I think, is that, is that, is that a just a Brazingid again? Uh, maybe. Do you guys like to zoom on anything here? Or just observing? Just observing. So that red Roger thing that. is a Brazingid? We think yeah. this one's a brittle star, maybe. I can't yeah. see from how, here. It's hard how, to tell. Yeah, I was going to say, what do you, what it's would you look at? just from seeing a lot to? of them in this <laughs> <laughs> pattern yeah. recognition. But if you had them side by side and you had, like, perfect, like, they were just laid out flat, yeah. What, yeah. Would you, what would you look at to tell the difference? Between a, a Brazingid and a, an Ophiroid? Yeah, brittle stars have five arms Oh. Um, every time. Brazingids can have many more, more. than that. Okay. But they also, like... Brittle stars will not have tapering arms as much as sea stars will. It's like one, one uh, thickness arm throughout the whole thing, and usually the spines are like are bigger than the width of the actual like central arm part. Their arms okay. are a lot more mobile too. Yeah. Okay. It's just a look too, you know, like that central disc has a vibe. <laughs> it has a vibe. <laughs> it is pretty distinct on the brittle stars. I've also dissected a lot of them, so I, you know, ah. you just got a feel for it by killing them. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it the Big Bang Theory that says, like, Bazinga? Yeah, yeah. It is. every time I hear Brazingid, I think of that. <laughs> like, when you said Brazingid, I went to Bazinga too. Yeah. I okay, also good. That, that needs to go in our in our in our uh, what you call it too of how we remember scientific names. <laughs> oh, our <laughs> yes, our catalog of um, clues. Yes, <laughs> Tina Turnafor. Yes. Tina yes. Turnafor, Bazinga, <laughs> <laughs> Christ, you so gorgeous. Praise this is not another move. Three three zero fifty meters. Yes, please. Where were all of you in my marine invertebrate class when I was trying <laughs> to remember all these things? That is how I remembered everything. I had to, <laughs> like, oh man, oh yeah, Argo pectin irradiance. See, I still know it. Is the is the bay scallop in Tampa Bay? And I just, I don't know, Argo pectin. I I, I, I turned it into agro, and it was like a farmer in irradiance. Like I rate, I just pictured this like, angry <laughs> little farmer in the middle of the. <laughs> the sand flat and that's how I remembered it. That's really good. <laughs> that's a really good visual. <laughs> you know those people that they're people who can remember really, really long strings of of like letters and, and numbers and stuff, like 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 thou a thousand to thousand plus characters of like random words or letters. Oh. They just like paint their the strategy is like they just paint like a, a picture in their mind. They like mm -hmm. put visuals to each of the characters or words and then like string all those visuals together into oh. a story. Oh, they're like, I'm walking into my house and the door frame is a brazingid and <laughs> right, exactly. touch the doorknob. Exactly. You have to do the like, like Sherlock Holmes 3D space thing, the mind maze. Yeah. <laughs> we have a lot of questions coming in. Uh, <laughs> one is, how do I spell brazingid? Lots of eyes. B R I S I N G I D. Bazinga. There's actually no eyes in it. <laughs> Coming from the same character who insisted that geology is not a real science. Oh. <laughs> He's now tired. That's, uh, who said that? He was Sheldon. wrong. Oh. He was wrong. <laughs> I would bet your whole career on it. <laughs> <laughs> My whole career? Well, I mean, I'm not a geologist. <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> but I will be the one betting your career. <laughs> well, I'm just really confident in it. <laughs> okay, don't get me cry laughing. I'm supposed to be <laughs> focusing on the screens. <laughs> yeah, what are we doing, Val? Have fun. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> we are making progress for all those tuning in. We are <laughs> halfway between waypoint three and four, which I have noted. Take a look over here. We oh, do we need to Walteria? take a look at that? Yeah, I think that's a Walteria with, with a squat a lobster on it. Munadopsis. Breaking up the bamboo coral monotony. I'll put my goldfish down and start taking <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I haven't right. quite seen a rock grab that I like yet, but uh, it's starting to look promising, so. Love that. And there's a shrimp in there. I love a promising debris field. Me too. <laughs> is that another fish? What? Where? Oh, this is a shadow of a rock. Never mind. They were those fish were very, very black. <laughs> so I was just looking at the absence of light under that rock. <laughs> and it kind of looked like a very small fish. <laughs> Kylie, would you make your the porch light there, please? Yes, you've got it. Thank you. Looks like it is off. So oh, turning it on, sorry. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> You can go ahead and push okay, on a bit more, please. Some snorts. <laughs> <laughs> For oh, those yeah. of you just joining us, we are at a depth of 2,300 meters or so. I know the name of this. On what is it? It's a w w Walter yes. Fleming Eye. Yes. Yes. Waltheria Fleming yes. Fleming Eye. Yes. Nice. I'm so impressed. Oh, wide, please. <laughs> Get it. I love him. I love those. <laughs> You know those like '90s pictures of the the globe where it's like all those like the Latin long grids. Yeah. It reminds me of that, huh. and I it aesthetically oh, yeah. really like it. I see where you're getting at there. Me gusta the grids. <laughs> <laughs> grids are good. Uh, are you listening to this? Are you like porch light off now? <laughs> Sorry. About yeah. That. Yes, please. <laughs> I was like mission accomplished. Kylie's just killing it on the science. Bio tonight. <laughs> you know in the geology last night. Yeah. Well, Although she's not sure if it's a science. Yeah. <laughs> no, I am totally. <laughs> she's sure it's a science. <laughs> it's, it's she's from Big overly Bang Theory. confident. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Sheldon from Big Bang Theory who thinks geology isn't a science. Right. Oh, I see. <laughs> and we You're have some seeing something. Extra what are you thinking, Ryan? No, no, just just up in the telestrator. Oh, that's just my natural state. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that's a really large base there. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. How old do you think that is? Very old. Hundreds of years. Not more. That's a tall guy too. I'll stop here if you guys want to look at the base. Very old, like it how is? long? Um, I don't have a good sense of bamboo coral ages. Um. Can you tell anything about like, like do does the number of like what's the Go distance ahead, between there, their, the nodes, the black? Thank you. Lines. Yeah. Is there anything there for I bamboo? I don't know if that is used in aging or not. Yeah, I'm gonna do a quick bump up here, guys. I see what you're saying though. Here, like the whole base is dead. Like a sea star would would pick a branch and work right. its way up that branch, but this whole base seems to be dead. Yeah. Is it, so if it doesn't have polyps, it's for sure dead. It's not just like balding or something. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's not, it's like the whole tissue is gone. Can I come partial white there, please? So the Let's get there. polyps are how it eats, right? Mm -hmm. Or, yeah? Yes. Raj. Something off to the side there. So by the push cores. Push cores? Yeah, I was just looking at the push core camera. Uh -oh. There's a really big thing, coral thing mm. uh, right next to it. Yeah, it's like parking in a, you know, you're parallel parking in the freeway. Right. Yeah. Down. Don't you know, parallel ahead. parking would be easier if we did have the Z direction, but I don't trust drivers t with a Z direction without a lot of training. <laughs> oh my God. Can you imagine parallel totally. parking in the Star Wars universe where, like, there are just, like, ca floating, flying cars at multiple <laughs> levels? I would not want to have to consider the Z in parallel parking. <laughs> you can never walk anywhere. It would just no. be complete chaos. <laughs> There's considerable layback right now, so perhaps um, we'll take a pause at waypoint four and then have uh, Atalanta and Herc settle out a bit. But there's about 150 meters of layback from the ship. Uh, yeah, on completion of this move, almost 10 meters remaining, then we'll hold. Okay, okay. sounds great. Can you imagine trying to find your car if you in the parking lot if you also had to look up? No, 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 I can barely do it in two dimensions. This is also kind of like a parking garage, though, right? We do have to go to multiple floors, and I constantly forget what floor mine is on. Yeah. <laughs> 
I actually did lose my car once in a parking garage because it was one of those that split onto two sides that weren't really accessible oh, to yeah. each other. Mm. And that was embarrassing because I actually called campus security. was like, I can't find my car. My friend <laughs> one time tried to call the cops, put in a report that her car was missing and then like found it days later in the same <laughs> parking garage. <laughs> yeah, I had to call the guy back. I was pretty embarrassed. <laughs> I almost did that for a bike once, but found it just in time. Ooh. Yeah, have, having a bike disappear is not fun. Yeah. Glad you glad it was not actually disappeared. It turns out I just had bad memory. <laughs> so we are on unnamed Seamount East in the Liliokalani Ridge. We're about oh, about a thousand miles, oh. roughly northwest of Honolulu, Hawaii, in the Pacific Ocean, at a depth of about 2,300 meters. We're climbing up this seamount slowly, uh, looking to take some rock samples for both geologic and biological uh, sampling. We're going to take some water samples on the way, and uh, as opportunities present themselves, we may collect some biological specimens as well. This Thanks for bringing it back to the, <laughs> to the <laughs> operations. Well, I know there are some people that were just joining us that were asking questions. So That's good. Um, yeah, this is a, a newly mapped seamount, oh. and we are the Jorge? first to, uh, Thank you. to get I'm down here and explore rocks. it firsthand. <laughs> Sorry, what was that that you guys wanted to take a look at? Um, this might be a good place to pick up a geo sample if it's okay for us mm. to pause here. How's the layback uh, at this at this point? Layback's considerable. Okay. Um, but we can we can take a pause here, yeah, for sure. Okay. And then uh, if we swing, we swing, and we'll just grab it and go. Yep. Okay. We had a question about why there isn't a lot of sediment in this area. Maybe high currents? I don't know. All right, you want to come full wide there, please, on, on Herc? Uh, that makes sense as to just saying. Sorry about that. No, you're good. On landing. Also depends on the productivity and the overlying waters. All right, Kylie, you want to get the arm out there? Yeah, so I'm seeing I'm seeing some good candidates here. Uh, right where the lasers are would Roger. be lovely. Uh, there are also some closer to the porch too. Go ahead and push on in there, please. <coughs> That's great. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe the one with the lasers on it, Kylie. There. Laser rock. Rock. And rocks with lasers full wide attached piece, or partial wide. That's good. The rock with lasers attached. Is that sounds more or less dangerous than sharks with lasers? I was just going to say, it sounds like Austin Powers' uh, line. You got it. You oh nailed gosh. it. See, I, I, I see you, Val. With freaking <laughs> laser beams <laughs> attached to their freaking heads. And will this be going into the starboard bio box? Yes. Reg. And let me check what we've got going on in there. Um, we already have two rocks for Val and A and B, so let's go for C. Roger that. Give me. I oh, think it it's attached. Loose? Oh, I think it's yeah. attached. Interesting. Okay. I can, I do have more grip force. I think it's I think it's pretty in there. Raj. Maybe try the upper right hand corner. Yes, that definitely looks. Oops, oops, that's not. Hold on, sorry. I just got to re-index, and I'm going to change my grip force. Okay. Raj. This is weird. It's like debris piles that are. Can I have porch light? Manganese crusting together right. almost. So, are, is there a particular one over here that looks cool? I would just give um, it a go, poke just, it. Just touch a prod. Yeah, anything. Wow, ah, that's that's all trusted yeah. together, huh? What about you? The sediment is misleading. It is. Oh, okay. That so doesn't like it. It's all attached. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that's okay. Yeah, if this isn't suitable, um, then yeah, we can keep uh, moving on and catch up with the ship. Maybe try. What? That one, yes. Yeah, maybe try this like angular one That's up to the a little bit up to the upper left. Upper left. A little bit, yeah, that one there. Try that one. Below where I am, or above? All right, above your claw. Raj. It's almost telling us something about the uh, how early these rubble piles formed. 
Yeah. Yeah, it looks in there too. Yeah. Don't move it yeah. at all. Everything's all stuck. Okay. Well, we'll keep we'll keep going. I'm, Sounds I'm gonna, good. I'm starting to get a little behind, so go ahead and stow the arm there, Kylie. Roger. We have been foiled by the manganese crusting. You want to come full wide there, please? Yet again. Val, can you talk a little bit about how that manganese crust forms? Um, Great. Very basically, sure. So um, one thing that we commonly see uh, on uh, samples that we recover uh, from deep underwater like this is uh, they, they are coated in... Um, basically a ferromanganese crust or an iron and magnesium rich uh, uh, crust. And this deposits on the rocks, uh, nucleates on the rocks uh, out of seawater um, at a very slow growth rate. So usually we're talking like Thank you. a few millimeters every million years or so, and it just builds up and builds up and builds up. And uh, uh, it tends to have a lot of uh, other metals in it in some places, things like uh, cobalt or uh, rare earth metals. And uh, <clears throat> the thickness of that and the deposition rates do vary from place to place in the oceans as well. So like over in the West Pacific, you can get um, on, si on rocks similarly aged to what we think these are here, um, much thicker manganese crusts, for example, than what we've been finding. A lot of ours have been at most couple of centimeters thick. Most of them are on millimeter scale thick that we've seen in the lab. So it's it's a secondary a secondary coating in the rocks. Um, and here it seems to be helping them stick together. We've seen we've seen some of that on on our last few dives. We had a question about whether uh, this is the kind of place we would be likely to find fossils. Mm. Maybe. Quick uh, gauge check with bubble, okay? Roach, go ahead. Real quickly. Sometimes you do find, um, like, uh, uh, animal remains, like gastropod shells and stuff, uh, uh, on the insides of uh, some manganese nodules. Uh, we found one of those when. Uh, uh, in 2013 out in uh, uh, the Tuvalu area, uh, Tuvalu region, a little bit north of uh, Samoa. Only one of those I've ever seen, though. That was probably a very rare find. How old would that shell have been? Um, given the thickness of the manganese crust, it was is probably... Is that a Is it? No. Um, that black thing-ish? No, it's it not. is not, but it's a great it's eye good. because the C pens, like if that had been a C pen with that thing on top, that would it, be Umbalula. Because it looks like the duster from Beauty mm -hmm. and the Beast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I we were that's that's a good image. Yeah, so that uh, manganese encrusted gastropod to answer that's your question. interesting because uh, even though we've stopped, I think. Oh, sorry. I'll go oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Just went off SPL. You can go ahead. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, uh, the gastropod that we found um, is probably similar in age mm -hmm. to the seamounts in the area. Which is not right. I don't know. We'll try. Yeah, we'll, we'll keep holding until, say, another five or ten minutes, just to make sure where they land at. Roger. We'll do another uh, DVL reset in like five minutes. That's yeah. good. I'll take that. <laughs> Oh, wow. Emil's comment? Yeah. <clears throat> Emil's saying that um, during the Voyager Seamounts expedition from last November, they came across a whale skull that was encrusted with ferromanganese crust. Yeah, that was cool. That's crazy. It was like a beaked whale. 
how deep was that? Like, was it? I would expect that to eventually dissolve away if it were below the CCD. I don't remember the depth that it was at. I just remember that it was a very cool sample that we couldn't sample. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be very cool to see. We've collected some sponges on 101. We collected some sponges that were also totally covered in, in ferromanganese crust. Oh, that could have been super, super old. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. Yeah. May I ask an ignorantly honest question? No. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Um, <laughs> are, well, I'm going to try to see if I have don't have don't if I can avoid getting there. Um, are fish bones hollow? I don't think so. No. Raj, okay. That's the end of the story. <laughs> well, okay, because she said beaked whale, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm, beaked whale, birds. And then I was like... <laughs> They both are, like, maybe they both have hollow bones. I know birds do. So then I was like, maybe they were evolutionarily something, something. But I, whale, not fish. I know. I just don't know much about no, evolutionary totally biology. Question. So I just didn't know if they were linked, and I just didn't know it, you know? Well, they are linked. They're just a little, just far back. Because whales are basically the birds of the sea. <laughs> like fish, sure. fish, fish, fish are the birds of the water. <laughs> Aren't they related to Let's elephants? Let's not get anyone confused. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't they related to elephants? Are they? By I don't being know. mammals. <laughs> Hippos are the closest land relative of whales. Okay. Huh. Really? I think so. Hippos are wild. So whales have a common, a relatively recent, but still very far back, common ancestor with... Uh, hippos and cows uh, essentially it, it's somewhere around that split and then um, hippos obviously represent uh, resemble like a transitional phase a little bit more than a cow does interesting i love that i love knowing that yeah, whales still have a vestigial pelvis even though they don't have your yeah. legs. <gasps> they have a floating pelvic bone. They used yeah. to have legs? They used to have legs. Mm -hmm. All all like marine mammals say more. <laughs> were terrestrial first and then and then they decided to peace out and then were like water. Like water. <laughs> See, I, I was making some strange comments about evolution the other day and it doesn't feel that strange anymore. Well and <laughs> Like to add to the strangeness. It starts with us. <laughs> <laughs> we choose what direction we go. It's just going to take many, many efforts. <laughs> Were you about to say something, Rhett? Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, was going to say to add to the strangeness, uh, Kylie, uh, the things that we call fish commonly, yeah. the, it's actually, it's not, a, a monophyletic group, so that means it's not one lineage okay. um, that doesn't have other things excluded from it arbitrarily. Mm -hmm. So the long and the short of that is that there are different things that we call fish, which are less related to each other than fish are to, like, say, a bird or, say, a, a mammal or whatever. Like, so, like, by the really, really broad, like, English definition of fish, if yeah. you wanted to make that into a uh, like a monophyletic group, so a group that's you know taxonomically all you know includes everything in it. You yeah. would you would include like most land vertebrates too. Roger, you are coming that's closer. Shall I wait? So, can you pull off the top okay. of your head some of those really different groups? Like are sharks like elasmobranchs? Okay, super distinct from other things we call fish. <laughs> But I'm stunned, and and <laughs> that is was a good answer to the question the other day from like what thing did have you heard about like that's per perpetuated but not really true right mm -hmm. yeah that, that is, is a good, a good thing. answer you're like I'm filing it away fish aren't all like brothers and sisters it's it's like <laughs> a, one of those words where it's useful but it's not completely Cor accurate in all contexts right there. We'll go three five zero. Let's go. Filed right next three to the. Three five zero, so we get you up. You know what? And then we'll start moving towards northwest. Three five zero. Yep. You know what that's reminding me of is um, how some uh, crustaceans. Correct me if this is the wrong term, but uh, how. Uh, Bridge. This is nap. Oh. 
we'll let him do that. Got no bridge. Bridge. Can we make a move on bearing three five zero fifty meters? Affirmative. Sorry, Val. What were you gonna say? Yeah, this uh, this this fish thing um, is making me think of uh, that weird evolutionary pathway where very different species have kind of all converged on uh, evolving a uh, a crab-like form. Oh, uh, mm. carcinization. That's a cool one. Yeah, Ooh, that is a cool what? one. Are you just what? Uh, lots I don't of, understand. Lots of different crustaceans over time, uh, which were not closely related to each other um, in a relative sense, um, all evolved towards a very similar looking form, which is like the classic crab yeah. you know, shape. Um, but there, there are lots of crabs that look very similar, but are, have actually, they diverged from one another very, very far back. Oh, but maybe because it's uh, evolutionarily yeah. beneficial, the shape Right. That they it all ended up the same place. That's the idea. Wow. And that's a like common idea in biology in general, like convergent evolution, where mm -hmm. you'll see even things that are not like you know crabs. I guess are relatively similar, but you'll see like very distant uh, organisms evolve similar traits for that region reason because it's evolutionarily beneficial Excuse in whatever environment yeah. they live in. We have a chunky starfish. I Chunk believe chunker. I believe he's been eating. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, predating. <laughs> Roger. I, I see a pattern here that is any different from what we see, like at the bottom of most of these corals, where. You're gonna come down a little on your delta there. You got it. All of the tissue is sort well, of. Those waves are. That was a good wave. Yeah. Waves top side, not on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a phone holder, doesn't it? <laughs> Go ahead and push on in there, partial, please. Yeah, let's see, it kind of looks like it started part way up this one branch. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I can see a little bit on the branch uh, right yeah, here right. that's still alive. Some of it's still alive, but then down at the bottom, a lot of the coral is sort of all the branches are naked. little bared. Huh. Do do see do sea stars ever? Oh gosh, I don't want to pull away, please. Go for it. Do sea stars swim, or do they just kind of walk they crawl. on the ground? Yeah. They crawl. Okay, Raj, because I was like, I have learned a lot that I did not expect already, so... <laughs> well, I'm going to go out. I know. Not crazy question. <laughs> For all I know, he jumped up there. <laughs> they move really slowly. They have this pretty cool water vascular system, so everything's basically hydraulics. Their little <sighs> tube feet extend and just by filling up with water and by sort of pinching off valves in different places, uh, they, they move, but... Um, yeah, they, they don't really depend on muscles for motion, so swimming would probably not be a thing. Oh, that do. makes sense. And they have thousands of those tube feet, and they can yeah. control yeah. each individual one. Spiders have a similar hydraulic system, if I remember correctly. Really? Really? Oh, yeah. I don't know about spiders. I have heard that. Not like I'm going to want to look at that up close and personal, Raj. <laughs> Working at the Too many legs. MCZ, where we send all the our biological samples to the repository, there's a, a whole section, because I worked in the invertebrate zoology and malacology department, and uh, there's a whole section dedicated to spiders, and I would have to walk past <gasps> that and through that all the time, mm -hmm. and they're just so big. I mean, like, such big spiders from really crazy parts of the world in these jars of ethanol, and it is, it was a lot. May I ask you to elaborate on what word you used after zoology and... Oh, yes. Uh, malacology, which is um, like mollusks. Oh, oh, oh okay. Raj. I didn't think I recognized that word, but I do know that word. Yeah. Mol malacology. Study of mollusks. And it got its whole own separate division um, 
because they have one of the most robust uh, like mollusk collections in the world at the Museum of Comparative Zoology. So they gave cool. it its whole own part of the name. That's so really cool. quick question for the back row. Um, okay, so we're nearing waypoint four, um, going to get there slowly. But would you guys, are you looking, anticipating a rock sample at waypoint four? Or are we just going to inspect there briefly and then continue? Um, I would like a rock if we can get one there. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll just see if uh, this kind of, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll see if it keeps uh, looking kind of sheet flow massive like this. But if things start to break up again, that'll be a good place to grab one. Okay. And yeah, um, even if we don't see one at uh, the summit there at Waypoint 4, if we go a little past it toward that saddle area, that's that's where we will have hopefully decent chances of uh, a grab. Like we share it? Yeah, yeah. The, between the Waypoint 4 and 5, I believe. Yep. Um, okay, sounds good. And perhaps yep. at Waypoint 4, we might see if we can get some of more of that swing out of, our, out of Atalanta, but it doesn't okay. seem very promising right now. But yep. Okay. Um, so, sounds good. So while we look around for a rock, we can also do two birds on stone, you know. Mm -hmm. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> One of our viewers believes that this sea star we're looking at is a Evoplosima species. Yeah, that's what I was actually guessing too, so. Cool. Nice. Good guess. Good job. I have a number of comments about uh, marine mammals. Viewer recommended we look up manatee toes because they are very closely related to elephants. Oh, maybe that's what I was thinking. Okay. Manatees uh, are good, yeah, like transition. That's, I can see the hip hippo similarity there. Or the elephant similarity. Well, apparently the they elephant. have a much better attitude than hippos. <laughs> manatees <laughs> are, that was one of the things I liked about living in Florida. Rhett, you know about this, but oh, going yes. into the springs there in the winter. They, the water in the springs is always a, a pretty similar temperature, around like 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And so they'll retreat there in the winter and there'll be hundreds of manatees and you can go kayaking sort of near them, which is really cool. They're quite they're friendly. Cool. They are. One of the problems they have with manatees is that they tend to cluster around the exhaust from power plants. Yep. And uh, when those power plants shut down in the winter, can have mass die-offs of manatees because they have no warm water source. They kind of get stuck in this spot when, when it gets cool and they don't migrate south again like they should. Or upriver. Can I come down or to the bit there, please? Sure. Surprise debris field here, but it's, it's, probably, it's probably stuck again. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> So, in the, in the, uh, words, in the course of, like, your studies, uh, biologists, um, w is, is evolutionary biology a advanced topic, or is it one of, like, the basic sort of, like, core classes you take when you are starting biology? It's definitely one of the core classes that you'll take in most biology degrees is an evolutionary, an evolutionary biology course of some kind, or that'll at least be worked into the classes that you take. Yeah, I was going to say it's sort of like, obviously it's a continuing theme throughout yeah. the entire process, really, because it's so central to the whole field of biology. So it but always stays relevant in, in, in everything, basically. Yeah. I wonder if there's any, like, evolutionary biology children's books. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah, are there? Definitely. definitely. Cause I need one of those. Yeah. <laughs> there, I'm sure there are uh -huh. lots of them. This is a field of, that I find very, like, the, I don't want to offend anybody, but, like, biology is not really my thing. <laughs> it's not mine either. I want the book, too. But the evolutionary <laughs> biology feels very interesting. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but I was wondering how much of it I could understand. You could understand 
if a lot of I it. didn't know general biology. You know oh, what I mean? a lot. It's like a very central. You are getting into there, so. Um, yeah. Sort of like. But depth is. Beautifully elegant and basic idea. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of really great like popular science books on biology that um, are centered around just the evolution of organisms and all the different curiosities. Yeah. Throughout it, so it's oh definitely yeah. a an accessible part of biology. Yeah. And stuff like the, some of those pop sci books are just they're so fascinating. Yeah, they're great. I mean, that's part of what got me just into completed into the biology. move. Yeah. Uh, maybe because of the depth, it takes some time to for Atlanta to settle. Do you think all good front row? Hey, back row, do you guys want us to just poke around for a sample here? And the Atlanta is going to settle out a bit, but um, we're pretty close to waypoint four. We can either do one more move a bit to the west and get right on to that point, or we can uh, just take a sample here. Um, these rocks might be attached yeah. over here, so I don't know. I'm not, it doesn't hey. look super promising. Roger. Keeping an eye out, though. Okay. So shall we? Would you rather a ship move? Yeah, let's get. Yeah, let's get over waypoint four. I'll move towards northeast. And we can Most start there, so our way you down. can be dragged over. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. Okay, so we'll move that way. Say something mm -hmm. around. Uh, yeah. Zero three zero. Yeah, that sounds looks good. good. Radia scrimp. 20 meters? Yeah. Or, or, yeah, however it takes to get there. Maybe 30 meters or so. 40. Okay, th we'll go for 30. It will be enough. Bridge, this is nav. Can we move uh, on bearing 3? Uh, sorry, 0, 3, zero 20, 30 uh, meters. 30 meters. 30, 30. <laughs> we had a question about uh, if the sea stars are eating the coral, what's eating the sea stars at this depth? That's a good question. Um, in this system, they might be at the top or near the top mm -hmm. of uh, the food chain, if you will. Um, Things like sharks might be able to eat them. I don't know if they're super palatable, though. What makes you say that? Just <laughs> the spiny platedness of them. <laughs> A little too crunchy. Yeah. And they don't have muscle, really. Yeah. I don't know if it's a lot of nutrition in there. Here's a good one. Uh, one of our viewers wants it us to. It does make sense. Now you jump to the edge and the depth. It looks like. One of our viewers wants us to put together a book club list. What's our, what are our favorite books? Hmm. I really like um, by Noah Yuval Harari, A Brief History of Humankind, Homo Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. I have it's that book. So good. It's one of those books where I'm like, I actually bought the paper copy because <laughs> I want to have it in my house one day. Totally. It, um, yeah, it's just a really interesting perspective on exactly what it says, but like from the very beginning of like, Homo sapiens 150,000 years ago to, to now, and and commentary on what we have been since then. It's that sounds really fascinating. Cool. Yeah. Um, I can recommend uh, Soundings. Um, I'm totally blanking on the author, and I will have to go look that up. But uh, Soundings, which we actually have a copy of in the ship's library here, is the story of uh, Marie Tharp and Bruce Heason. And... Um, 
they uh, uh, together uh, facilitated the uh, development of um, the first uh, physiographic map, uh, uh, which is uh, a way of illustrating a bathymetric map of uh, the world's oceans and revealed that there's a lot more going on on the sea floor than what we had thought before those maps were really developed because for a long time we thought that um, ocean basins were these kind of boring featureless things under all this water and it turns out they're anything but. And their work also revolutionized geology as a science because uh, we started seeing you know, tectonic plate margins and figuring out how, um, you know, how the continents moved around and how, uh, you know, how the ocean basins are formed, why they're shaped this way, you know, why certain earthquakes occur where they do. And it just kind of made geology kind of start to uh, make more sense. Looks like Holly felt. Yes, you Googled I, it too. I did. The story of a remarkable woman who mapped the ocean floor. Yeah. Yep. Marie Tharp is amazing. Yeah. Cool. I have a sticker of her on my laptop. I think I'm going to have to put that on my to read list. There's a children's book called Anything Ocean loose. Speaks about Marie, Th Marie Tharp as Anything well. Anything loose oh, we can't cool. collect. We have it in the ship's library in the lounge. It looks like it. Yeah. My uh, sort of biology recommendation is this book called Carol, you come down Endless Forms, the Forms Most please? Beautiful. It's a, sign, it's a book about um, basically how studying the embryos of different organisms gives all these different insights into evolution. Um, and it's a really fascinating book. So that's my That's cool. That's a thing, By you know, Sean Carroll. <coughs> studying, em em like studying the really early stages of bio really can sometimes make it more obvious what things are related to one another. So when you look at tunicates, for example, they're invertebrates that are, some of the invertebrates that are most closely related to, to things with spinal cords like us. And you can see in their really early life stages that they actually have a notochord or something similar to a spinal cord. And they have something similar to like a larynx and uh, uh, that's like it's it's and then they lose that you know or sometimes lose parts of that and it makes it difficult to tell you would not be able to tell looking at a sea squirt for example that that is closely related to humans <laughs> not closely but more closely than other things I'll go with a filmmaker book uh, The Silent World by Jacques Cousteau is a really Ooh. good uh, Ooh, I just got the chills. memoir sort of adventure story by um, Jacques Cousteau, the filmmaker and explorer, uh, about his experiences in early modern ocean exploration and developing scuba diving. And it's got a lot of good adventure stories in it. And also um, just kind of the general this excitement is loose or of being the first people to go to a new place. Or, yeah. It was Jacques Cousteau who uh, developed a video tow sled that uh, let him get pictures of um, mid-ocean ridges. Wow. I didn't know that. After, I didn't know that. after uh, Tharp and Heezen started yeah. uh, publishing the maps. Hey, Val. So we're trying to find a spot of loose anything. Yeah. Um, we don't think to the lower left. I don't think that's, I think that's fused, but maybe over here to the right, perhaps? Um looking here yeah yeah this oddly shaped thing may be loose it's really hard to tell around here yeah it's kind of slim pickings it really is yeah mm, that might be something yeah that looks Maybe. sort of promising all right kylie you want to get the arm out there yeah i'm just trying to set we up will never it. know until we try it <laughs> miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take exactly. who said that Michael Scott. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's very wrong. <laughs> I get off the rock there for you, my bad. I wonder if Wayne Gretzky knows about Michael Scott. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I pulled out. <laughs> Yeah, just see maybe down right below um, 
Okay, you're not going to park garage. No, I'm just kind of a I'll just bad poke spot around. here. Right, right in front of you, yeah. Er no, it's in there. That's oh, loose. That's loose. You want to grab that guy? Mm, okay. Oops. Sorry, let me get it's a little okay. closer to you. Yeah. Send down again. All right. We'll take you for a ride. Come here. Yep. Nice. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> No, that's good. That should be an easier angle to, to grab onto. Nice. Nice. I'm going to get out of this spot a little bit. What Pull a forward. manageable size. <laughs> <laughs> that will definitely fit on the rock saw. Is that... Oh, 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 hard to tell size. Uh, about 10 centimeters on that side, roughly. Really? That was a nice grab. Yeah, nice. That was good teamwork. Flying and grabbing. Uh, video, uh, never mind. I, I'll wait. Yeah, I'll set it down right up here. I'm going to halt this and pull up a little bit. Reg. No, not yet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That sponge is right where I want to park. <laughs> Excuse you. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you think it parallel parked there? <laughs> totally did, yeah. Got places to go, things to see. Yeah, mm -hmm. places to go, indeed. But also, it's denser up here than it is down there. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Is there anything floaty in the starboard pile? Um, shouldn't be. It's just rocks. Reg. Maybe I'll just clip my nose into the cliff here. We have a book recommendation from one of our viewers called Below the Edge of Darkness uh, by Dr. Edith Witter, which is about bioluminescence. Mm. Edith Witter is a visually impaired person. Oh, wow. It's amazing to study bioluminescence. Yeah. Yeah. With visual impairment. All right. So okay. I'm going to slightly touch off this edge here. I really enjoyed a book I read it. called The Scientists by uh, Roger. John Gribben. It's just about it. the history of, of science as we know it. A lot of really good stories of those early scientists. Suleiman, do you have a book recommendation? Do I have what? A book recommendation? A favorite book that you would... Favorite? Something to read. I can't hear you. Book to read? Say again. <laughs> I think I'm too quiet. Someone else. Do you wanna do you wanna put that into the light there? We'll get us. I couldn't hear you. Oh, sorry. Um, a book to Outboard. read, like your a favorite yeah. book or favorite nice. author. Mm. Maybe go. Ah, uh, okay. Rest down a bit. Yeah. Uh, not really. No. All right, right. Go ahead and push on it, please. All right, that's good. That yeah. is a nice size. Maybe I'll tilt up a little bit so you get more in the light. Can't think of any right now. Well, if you do think of one, let Is us know. Is that too bright for you there, Rhett? No, I just have to, to adjust for where we are. Roger. Is this a good rock? Yeah. It, it appears like it is. Cool. Okay. All right. Good size. I see some igneous textures. Forward, it please. And I'm not racked back, so... Roger. Oh, Go Jesus. Raj. And I will take it, given we weren't seeing a whole lot of prospects in this area. That is not the craft arm. Okay. Nice. 
All right, I'm gonna open up that box. Roger. And which pin is this? And Starboard C. So that you don't hit the corals. Go ahead and tuck the wrist over other way. Oh, well. Yeah, if you, if you wrist a bit more to the left there, just to not hit the corals. Nice. Nice. I can't see over there. Raj. All right, switching over salvos now. Roger. And sorry, Leela, what was the uh, was we? starboard C. Starboard C. 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 C? <laughs> Under the sea. See you later, Rock. Yeah. What's your top side? Very nice. Thanks. Wrist pitch down into the box a little bit more next time. Yeah, so you can see like the fingers go in. Gotcha. Um, nice. So when you go back around, not, would not you stroke. do the opposite thing and have like the wrist tucked this way? Yeah. Raj. Just yeah, enough so that it doesn't hit the pistons, but since you're in a tight spot. Yeah, okay. I'll switch over salvos now. Okay. Do we need a nice. water sample at this spot no, too? No. no. Okay. I'm seeing some really polished uh, ferromanganese crust. As my yeah, shiny. A bit. How's that? Good. Yeah, maybe a little bit more inboard so I don't sure. get a coral. Hehehe. <laughs> my crazy dread. Okay. <laughs> Good. Yeah, that rocks. I had my first, um, oh, that's not indexed moment. <laughs> Which like, you know, like when you think you indexed it and then it goes and you reset and it's moving with you and you're like, oh, lovely. <laughs> oh, glad I did that. <laughs> <laughs> and our porch coral is still with us. Our porch coral is still with <laughs> us. hanging on. Yeah. We tried picking it up out of the porch and we couldn't get it, so maybe yeah. it's pretty lodged in there. All That's right. got to be an awkward so, angle. So, um, what is next? So keep moving towards waypoint five. Uh, yeah. Let's let's start crossing that saddle there. Reg. Yeah. So one of our manganese crust uh, colleagues on the onshore uh, science team so is telling us that these are. Oh, we'll sorry. Three one zero. Three one zero. Yep, so Crunch. you can land right on top of 4.5. Sounds good. 310. Ready for it? Let's do it. 310, let's do it. Bridge, this is Nav. Hey, Kylie, would you mind just checking how many plates I have on the front porch there? Sure. Uh, can we get the ship on move uh, to move Ooh, on bearing? That's not going to help. Three, one, zero, 50 meters. Yes, please. You only have two. Right. We have another book recommendation for Other Lands A Journey Through Earth's Extinct Worlds by Thomas Halliday. Uh, request for any deep water exploration book recommendations. Hmm. There's got to be something about the Marianas Trench out there that's good. Bob Ballard has an autobiography, doesn't he? Yes.
So there are some patches here that you might notice have uh, kind of shinier, smoother looking uh, ferromanganese crust than uh, some other spots. And one of our uh, uh, onshore colleagues who uh, works on uh, manganese crusts was telling us that um, they could be kind of polished and eroded um, by the current. That's what uh, uh, develops, uh, causes some of those uh, more exposed areas to uh, kind of shine. So we've had a couple of rocks come come through the lab that have that, that sort of texture. I was interested to see if this, the amount of uh, bamboo corals with sort of necrotic skeletons would change as we got up to the top of this feature, but it seems it's pretty, pretty consistent. It's pretty pervasive. Yeah, it's all over. I wonder why. Yeah, it's re really interesting. Yeah. We still have quite a bit of climbing left in the waypoints on this dive, I wonder. Yeah. If it changes at all further down the ridge. I wonder. Three five zero is what I wanted. Three. These are about halfway, roughly, That's through the uh, planned dri uh, dive track. Ah. Uh, um, Emil, one of our... Three one uh, zero? Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I misheard. Or oh, misremembered, good. whichever. I don't know. <laughs> we have a book recommendation from one of our onshore scientists. Uh, Emil recommends Mapping the Deep by Robert Kunzig. And this is another one that's in the ship's library. And this has an overview of physical oceanography, geology, uh, some biology. And it talks um, a little bit about uh, multi-beam mapping, which is something that uh, we do a lot of with uh, Nautilus. And that helps us uh, generate um, high resolution bathymetric maps of the seafloor that we're sailing over. And helps us plan these dives. Very much so. We've been doing some of that on the fly the last couple of days uh, since we had to move north to avoid um, some uh, unfavorable weather down in uh, Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. But we are hoping to head back that way uh, for tomorrow's dive. I've got a really good coffee table book in my middle school science classroom called Creatures of the Deep. It's just got some really good like full page or two page spread uh, images of some of the really kind of creepy looking fish that you find oh, down here. Yeah. There's cool. A, there's a big coffee table book called Just the Deep. That's also a really awesome photo guide to the deep sea. I remember seeing early in my under undergraduate career and being like, whoa. Sorry guys, I'm uh, <laughs> just getting myself <laughs> oriented and getting, uh, getting ahead here. No problem. Do you scientists happen to know what the word so like if if bathymetry is like the study of like the seabed the seafloor mm -hmm. like what's what or like you know if you make a bathymetric map like that's the seafloor what how what would be the word for like the chemical composition of like the like the profile of the water column is there a word for that like going down from like surface to so ocean or surface to deep yeah yeah stratigraphy uh, but you mean from the top of the, from like the surface of the well, water too, or do you mean from like surface of the sediment and deeper? Oh, not from the surface of the sediment and deeper, from the, like in the water yeah. column. It would fall under biogeochemistry. Biogeochemistry, Roger. Because like, I've done lots of like CTE casts. Yeah. And I'm wondering like, what is... I guess that would be more like you could call that chemical oceanography. Yeah, on the delta Ro there, Roger. Like chemostratigraphy. Chemostratigraphy. But that's more like I think of with like from the surface of the sediment and deeper, right? Like stratigraphy, you'd think about. But that could just be my interpretation. I feel like I'll think, I think of like rock layers or sediment layers. Yeah. Or Are you yeah. going downhill? 
Yeah, and the currents picked up for Rod. some reason. So. Ooh.